Yo, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of the Sab Did It Podcast right here on iHeartRadio, YouTube.com slash Sab Did It. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit. I got a real dope episode today. I got my dog, Made by Villain, engineer producer in here with his team. Some dope ass producers. Some good. dope ass everything. Man, why don't y'all introduce yourselves, man, to the people, man? Man, what's the fucking happening in this bitch, man? It's your boy Villain. You can follow me on uh, Instagram at Made by Villain, man. We in this bitch. I engineer and I produce, man. Coming at your ass hot, boy, playing pressure. Yeah. Oh, no, you can't. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I'm Andre Legend, Mr. Make of the Producers and Secure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh I'm shots, fired. shots fired. Shots fired. Oh hey, shit! He said, I'm I'm body, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm work. said I'm him too. I cannot. Let him know, man, Bert. What's going on with y'all, man? My name is Berkeley. But, you know, a lot of people like to thank me and everything, but I'm gonna let Villain go ahead and get his interview started. We ain't got time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now you're being too nice. Get your ass out. You gonna make it happen? Hey, well, That's we in it. We in this thing, man. What shit? You know, Villain. This show. Uh, this show second time on the show, man. You was here yes, for, sir. for, so for he my dog, Mr. Cold Fucker. Low life and ease was in this bitch. That was a good. That was a good day too. I think we barbecued some more shit that day. Shout out Cole Fucker. Damn, y'all got barbecue? Man, we barbecued and everything that day. Nah, all the Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, Fourth of July weekend, bro. Hey, I got invited. I was gonna say. So we, so we don't get barbecue. That's how it is. Okay. Oh, hey, my bad, dog. I mean, it kind of was a holiday. <laughs> well, let's oh, let's start from the beginning. Um, so, Philly, man, how, how did you uh, how did you get your start in music? First of all, where'd you grow up? Man, oh, shit. shit. I ain't proud of it. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with you. Right, nah, I was, man, I, I, I'm originally from 626, bro. I grew up in a, a small town in San Gabriel, San Gabriel Valley called Azusa. Okay. Uh, but I've been back and forth to, uh, in, uh, like, growing up to uh, L.A. and shit, and then eventually as I got older, I just ended up living out in L.A. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, man. It has it has that effect where it just kind of draws everybody in. Yeah, bro. Definitely. A lot of bullshit, too. You know, you know, growing up, <laughs> like, even if, you, if, if you're not from L.A., <laughs> but, like, you got families there, you're going back and forth. It's right. kind of like, you want to be there, you feel me? Because it's just like you were like growing up, it's like the place to be. Yeah. Like you know what's funny? Everybody in LA, well, not everybody, but most of the people in LA are not from LA. Yeah, bro. It's, it's, just, weird. it's just a cesspool yeah. of all kinds of shit and people. It's like a gumbo <laughs> pot of fuck shit. But I, 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 <laughs> I, I rep the shit. city, bro. I fuck with the city tough, man. Facts, facts. What about you, big dog? Shit, I'm from Pittsburgh, uh, East Coast. I moved out here a couple years ago. Yeah, this is my white It's the only white boy I let in the squad. It's the only white boy that's somehow that's funny as hell. Pittsburgh. Yeah, bro. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How the saying? fuck did you find your way out here, man? I always ask people from uh, from out of state how they found their way to Hollywood. Bro, so I, shit, I started making like Detroit beats and shit like two years before I ever moved out here whenever I was like in Pittsburgh. And then that whole wave like kind of came and went. And I was like, all right, I got to like switch it up and shit. And I right. started like, you know, look, looking for just different shit because I feel like I was getting tired of like, you know, the same shit that was coming out of Pittsburgh and just in general. Like, I wanted something different. And then I right. started hearing like Draco and like Shoreline Mafia. And I was like, bro, these beats are fucking crazy. And oh, like, right. Right. eventually it just became where like Draco is my favorite rapper. And like, I started making beats just like him. You yeah, know, rest in like, peace, man. Yeah, rest in peace to Draco, like, man. He's, he's like one of a kind, president of LA. Hey, how, did, how, did, how did that, how did the passing of Draco affect y'all? It's shit. It was. It's rough because he he was the reason I made beats. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. I got to record him one time, but I didn't get the placement, which is like so, like it sucks because like he's he's why why I'm out here making the music that yeah. I do because like he's he's so hard. Like, yeah, I never like, I never crazy. got to meet I never got to meet Drago, but um uh, one of my videographers, Voice Too Hard, shout out to Voice Too Hard. He um he he was a big part of uh the early Draco, yeah, you know Draco's yeah, videos and shit, yeah. man. And they had they had a they had a pretty close relationship yeah, too, man. Yeah, I didn't know Draco personally, man, but yeah, just I mean, just in the matter that it happened, man, that's just right. it's fucking devastating. Yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. Yeah, a nigga yeah. voice for sure is a, a was a definitely a, a definite early part for a lot of people mm -hmm. in L.A. I man, shout really, out to fucking Voice Too Hard, man. Yeah. Put some respect yeah, on my dude's name. Them videos inspired me, yeah. So I came out here and started doing my thing. And yeah, been, that's what's up, bro. Ever since, yeah, hit the ground running. That's up. Then we got yeah. South Central Zone right here. Hold on. That's Hold on. Man. Talk about <laughs> it. Yeah, definitely. Let me know your body, bro. South Central. <laughs> Grew up a lot of different parts in L.A. Lived in Long Beach. Long Beach. That's right. Lived in the South Long Beach. Lived in shit. Lived in Compton for a while. Lived in a lot of different places. But definitely South Central, baby. LA baby, said, but, hey, that's crazy because I moved around a lot too, bro. Yeah, like I think I feel like you just I don't know maybe it's just maybe it's just the the area shit or no, it's the oh. fact that LA is high as fuck. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, you right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Prices oh, for everything is high. Oh god, you go where everything is the cheapest yeah. at the moment. I moved everything around like high. a motherfucker, dog. That mess is crazy. Yeah, well, okay, let's start. Let's start from right to right to left, man. So how how'd you get your start in music, bro? Man, bro, I, uh, shit. Uh, 
man. I just like I, I don't even gonna cap. Like I, I, I grew up like uh, into like break dancing. This is the last time, bro. Like, but mm-hmm. I grew up break dancing, so like I've always had like a type of rhythm. You feel me? Right. And then like I had a <laughs> homie in high we school. We still need someone to spin on his head one time. <laughs> 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 one time. Hey, you well, you know, I think I told you that last time. Like, you don't want to see my body, bro. Come on, you don't want to see my body. Let me see the flip, dog. Hell yeah. I still got my shit. Yeah, man, but yeah, and I had a homie in high school that had a jump pad, and like, I didn't really take it serious, because I was out there trapping and shit, doing my little shit after right. high school, and then like, I just kind of like, randomly, I was like, man, you know, fuck it, I'm, th- I'm gonna just take this shit serious, bro, I'm gonna see what it is, started learning off logic, and from there, it was just history, bro, I just kind of set some goals, like, I'm gonna work with so-and-so, I'm gonna work with so-and-so, like, for instance, one of them was like, I'm gonna work with Phoenix Flex, and then my boy CJ ran off on the plug, shout out, ran off on the plug, man, he tapped me in with him, and it's kind of cool, because like, from there, I'm just like, damn, this shit's real, this shit, this shit could really happen yeah, if you really get your mind to it. Facts. You know, so What'd you start in up first? Was you was you making beats first? Or I was just making beats, and then like uh, shit. I, I I went to school for a little bit, but that time I had my daughter, so like I just dropped out. You feel me? But like at that at that time, I was transitioning out. My homie be like, "Yeah, bro." Like I was like, "What's up, engineer?" He's like, "Bro, I just I just fucking track out cats, and I can make bread." I'm like, "Damn, for real?" Work. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Man, I'm gonna try it." I started learning that shit little by little. Went on YouTube. Then I just started learning and along the way. I met some people. Like one of my boys, Randy. He, he worked it on the, uh, I think the uh, Fast Six. He did like the Conga line on the beach outro scene. Oh, that's hard. And then one of my other guys in my old studio, Uptown Whitty here. Uh, his name's Menno. He was one of the drummers on Blink 182, and now he has uh, one of his EQ plugins. Like that dude was one of my uh, mentors. So like, I still tapped in with these guys, and I still hit them up till to this day. Like, hey, bro, what's up? Yeah, like, what should I do with this? And they'll like still point me. So like through that, like they really kind of. Like screaming like, hey bro, like just stick to it. You could do it. You right, feel right. me? And like I kind of just I just like damn, you know, I'm gonna do this shit. And I just kind of like started like I really just like recording a lot now. Yeah. You feel right. me? These cats on, on, on the left of me, they're the ones that really make the beat. You yeah. Feel that me? Part. Sometimes I'll do the claps or the percussions type <laughs> shit. Yeah, no, I feel I feel I mean, I mean my, my journey in well in engineering started the same way, man. I started off tracking and shit first. Yeah. You know, so shout out to T John Anders, my mentor, man. Uh, yeah, my dog, man. man. Shout out to everyone that looked yeah. out for us. Yeah, man. yeah, on God, man. Cause you know what? But the thing, the thing is, man, you gotta appreciate people who, you know what I'm saying, wanna wanna help guide you and shit too. Cause yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like for for me, just speaking for myself, man, a lot of people didn't want to give me the game, so I was hella naive to like publishing and shit like that early mm-hmm. on. You feel me? But you know, when people started, you know, the right people started, you know, pointing me in the right direction to help. But that's how I started. I started off tracking, and then you know, learned how to mix. It's, it's a process, though. It yeah, takes time. It, you yeah. gotta have the ear for it too. Sure. So what about you, big dog? How did you start making beats, man? Shit, I started when I was like twelve, just like putting together my favorite parts of songs type shit. You know, right. <laughs> just like dumb shit. But I didn't start taking it seriously till like high school. Uh, I got like my first placement with Famous Dex, and like when I was in like sophomore year or some shit like that and like at the time like nobody really knew who famous dex was even though that was like his peak type shit but like i didn't get yeah, my flowers yeah, talk your cool. shit uh, yeah, talk your shit yeah. so then and yeah and then after that i was like shit like i really want to take this serious so i started like paying attention to, like the local scene and my boy stoney who uh i started interning at his shout studio and then, yeah shout out him uh he put me on he, he opened a lot of doors for me in pittsburgh you know what i'm saying he, he got me my jimmy wapo placements and shit like that got me like it just in the room with like a lot of people i normally wouldn't have you know uh, and then shit. Once I once I started sending out loops to just people online, I found I found villain uh, through I, f- I forget exactly what, what what song I saw that he produced, but I started yeah, sending some crazy. loops. Oh okay. And like I came out here, and then he just like he treated me like like one, like his Man, brother right. from the beginning, bro. He took me under his wing, like hit the ground running. Yeah, it's so. crazy how we met, bro. Is yeah. He sent the loop. I don't know how it happened, but he sent the loop, and I was like, that shit hard. He DM'd me. I was like, yeah, bro. And like, just from there, it was kind of like some like high school shit. Yeah, bro, I fuck with you. I fuck with you. Yeah, bro. Like, oh, yeah, all right, bro. I'm tapping with you. Yeah, right, right, then next thing you know, like, fast forward, he's like, I'm going to move out there. I was like, all right, man, I fuck with you, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. you a cool ass white boy. And he's just That's like right. fucking with the whole LA scene. Mm-hmm. He came out here, bro, and it was just kind of like, it was like some like Batman and Robin shit. You yeah, feel we're me? working together <laughs> like <laughs> every shit. day type right, shit, every right. day. Because it was before my girl got out here too and shit. So right, like, right, right. We were just literally wake up every day in the studio, like just go to the studio, work, doing something, something music related, you know? Right. So it's just, just sure, right. it's been motion ever since. So right, right, shout right. Shout out Villain, shout out Villain, for real. Yeah, facts, facts. So like, how was that transition for you coming from all the way from the East Coast, from Pittsburgh into California and shit? Like, Honestly, bro, like, I know a lot of people say like, oh, I moved to like LA and shit, it was harder than I thought. And yeah, for sure, like it, it definitely was a lot harder than I thought because it's like the highs are really high, but the lows are some we way had a school lower room. than anything. I had a school That's room. some real shit. That's but some like, real shit. Bro, so I was making LA and Detroit beats like before I moved out here. So when I came out here, I was like, bro, this is where I'm supposed to be. Because when I when I played my beats, people were like, I, I got the reaction that I, that I really wanted. You know what I'm saying? People were really like, bro, like you're... Like you're hard, and I was like, "That's I know, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> but it felt good. It felt good yeah, to yeah, finally like, get that kind of like recognition. Right? Saying, no, that's like, good. Yeah. Hey, but as you should though, as you should though, man. Yeah, what's yeah. understood ain't got to be explained. You got to earn your yeah, keep yeah, and be proud of yourself. Yeah, All right, sure. what about you, big dog? How'd you get started in
when I first played the clarinet, I didn't think I would do anything with it after that. You look like a clarinet go. type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even gonna hold you. He said I was getting the pictures with the clarinet though. But it transitioned to I was good at writing stories. I started writing okay. songs. I tried to I started rapping at first. No shit. But then I needed beats. I needed beats. So then I was like, all right. I don't want to pay for all these beats. I, I don't know these right. people. Then it's hard to, because it's actually it was crazy. I was coming in humble, trying to actually reach out to producers when I should have just been stealing their shit. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. You was, no, but you, you was doing, you was doing good baby. business, though. You was trying to do good business, though. Yeah, 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 and after you. that, <laughs> I started making that. Now them producers had, can't fuck with you. Yeah. So I had a couple, of, I had a couple um, people in my life, my big cousin, Keyshawn, and I had another um Family relative named Rashad, they actually went to Los Angeles recording school. Oh, okay, bet. So they were going there for engineering and different Shout stuff out like Lars. that. And they would take <laughs> me, they would let me come over and see them do different stuff in sessions. And then they would just take me, like, Lars has a, a studio on that's near the campus. Right. Yeah. And they have a bunch of different rooms. They like and they let their students rooms. come in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go in there like freelance shit, yeah. Like so I that's used hard. to go in there with them, sneak in there, try to, you feel me, do different little shit. And then... Right. After that, somehow, later on down the line, I was buying weed near my house and ended up meeting a dude who would later be yes. my manager. Oh, shit. So, um, yes. He had a music label. Shout out to my, uh, shout, shout out to line. Will. He but. had a music label called WP Music, so then I ended up going over there, and then um, from day one over there, I was over there every day. I was over there for like six months. It felt like uh, when Jordan refers to that six months when he was in the gym, yeah, I yeah. was in... I was there every day. I was at the studio. So right. yeah. I just got good from being in there, putting in a lot of hours. And then I, um, he had a couple different artists on a label. And one of the main artists was named ESO. She has a couple different. So you ever heard the song called Sauce in the Boston? It's a song that um, was going crazy in LA for a little while. I think I remember that. Yeah. I've done a lot of music with him and okay. through doing music with him. I've gotten songs with main music, um, OMB PZ, different people. Right. And then later on down the line, meeting Villain was weird because I met Villain. The first time I met Villain, we, um, Shit, how long was ago was that now? I, don't remember. I was just thinking it was like about two that, years man. ago. Two, yeah, two and a half. Like two and a half years mm -hmm. ago, we linked up at um, another artist out here named Swifty Blue. Yeah, shout out to Swifty artist. Blue. Yeah, shout out Swifty We linked Blue. up at Swifty Blue Spot, Swifty. and then um, at Swifty Blue Spot that day, Jeezy and DJ, Blue Buzz Clan, Jeezy mm -hmm. and DJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. they oh, were yeah. at his spot and then we did a song with both of them that yeah, the first day the first day. day I ever met that's Billy. crazy yeah that's so crazy that was a, that's crazy. ever since then you know we just been tapped in trying to link up whenever we can go crazy but the last two months we've been together like all the time just reconnected right yeah. just time just everything so we've been going crazy yeah and that's when I met Andre right yeah, yeah, hey days. it's crazy how the universe worked like that though bro but that's it's good girl, you, in yeah. order, I think in order for you to have any successful successful partnership or, or growth man you gotta have the right people around you yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely yo teamwork yeah, makes the dream you can't bro. do nothing yourself like yeah. I said it's not gonna work I be trying to tell people that bro like everybody wanna be the guy instead of just See, being I, I used to be that I used yeah. to be that I, I, I was, was just like, trying to be one of the guys that's it you feel me I feel you on that oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Well, yeah. so what's what, so what's your guys' typical like creative process, man? Like, well, let's start let's start with let's start with you, bro. Like, like when you get into your your zone when you're making beats and shit, do you already got kind of like an idea of what you're going for, or you just let the vibe take over? Um, well, typically I always try to start off with some type of concept in my head. Mm -hmm. because if I don't, I feel like I'm gonna just be sitting there making whatever, and then after mm -hmm. I'm done, I'm gonna be like, ah, uh, what did I really make? Yeah, 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 <laughs> right. But I try to always go on with some type of concept. And uh, at least a music scale. That's what's been helping me. I'm right. like, all right, I want to make a beat in F minor or A minor, and then I'll just go from there. Or I want to make a trap. That's beat a good. That's a good approach, though. Yeah. Or I'll think of a particular artist and think of a sound, and I'm like, all right, I want to make one of those tonight. Right. And I'll just go from there. But that's after time of just learning that you have to kind of get as far as being a producer or engineer. Got to get your workflow together, right? Because you'll yeah, be sitting in front of the computer for ten hours. Yeah, and then time hours. flies like a motherfucker when you're looking yeah. at them screens, dog. That's crazy. I know all about it. Sure. What about you? What about you, bro? How, how's your creative process typically? Sure. I mean, I, I used to kind of just sit down and like make whatever I was feeling at the time, but like I feel like lately I've been I've been trying to focus on like finding my my own sound and like my like yeah. my style and something you could really like point to and be like, oh yeah, that's on. See, sure, I think know? that's every producer's dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think, but but I think also too, not to cut you off, but I think no, that yeah. I think that's the thing that we all strive to as as producers, engineers, artists, whatever, uh -huh. is to just you want to have your signature sound. Oh yeah, yeah. Because we're all heavily influenced by right. something. Otherwise, why do we get into music? Oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Something inspired us to do it, right? Definitely, yeah. But but what what do you think what do you think the biggest challenge um, that any producer including yourself or whatever um, faces trying to find your own signature sound? I'm gonna be like for me I think it's just figuring out like what you want and and, and what you you tr you're trying to do who you're trying to become what right. kind of producer you want to be because I feel like 
no matter what you're doing, no matter what kind of music you're making, like the 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 whole idea behind any doing any art is like you got to learn the rules, learn the fundamentals, learn that shit really really well, and then to be great, tastefully break them. You know, you got to like learn what's like like this is what's accepted, this is what's happening, this was all right. Let me like see if I can like put my own twist on that, but not in a way that like alienates people who are like already fucked with the movement. You got to strike that like perfect balance. You know, I think that comes down from just knowing yourself and knowing like what you draw from the music you listen to type shit. Cause it's like, if, if you're not making what you want, then you're not really going to have a good understanding for what would draw other people to that. Yeah, that's so, true. So, so yeah, I mean, in, in general, my, my creative process lately has, has just been like, honestly, like, I'll go through phases where like I won't make beats for a few days, but when I do, like I have inspiration and it's like something right. that's been in my head or I heard something or I'm like, okay, I want to nah, take this idea. He really like be going like, through it, bro. He really like he's a real life producer. <laughs> I'll be him, I'm, like, just hey, to, bro. I'm just trying to do some different. I'll be dead ass like trying to work with him. I get off work and I'll be like, hey, bro, okay, you want to you want to come cook up? Like no, nah, oh, because you want to cook up at like 11 nah, p.m. Nah, bro, I'm, matter, I'm up at though. 7 a.m. Work now. I'll be trying to cook up with my dog and he'd be like, you know, bro, I'm going, I'm going through it right now. He'd be like, he'd be laid out on the bed, he'd be sweating, he like, look, bro, I like, bro, you got no shirt on again? He'd be like, nah, I got no. I was like, oh, dog, you going through it, huh? Like, fuck. He real life be like exhausted. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't know what to do with this next beat. And I'm just like, damn, dog. Like, you good? Like, anything. You want to go out to eat or something? Like, hey, I'm like, definitely based on. Hey, but I feel, I feel you on going through those like creative waves too, dog. Yeah. And and you know one one struggle that that I that I run into too is because you know I engineer, I produce, yeah. I podcast, mm-hmm. and I rap too. So so See? it's like challenging all oh, those. Nine. I'll go through a phase where. Oh, engineer always seems to take over everything yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. bro, because it's so yeah. time consuming because I, I work with so many artists. So I'll go through a phase where I'll make beats for like a whole month and just yeah. kick ass. You know what I'm saying? You know, but then I might not make a beat for a yeah. whole another month. I feel like you can't, you, you can't really saying? do both. Like you can do both. Don't get me wrong, but it's just you're gonna be better at doing just one. Yeah, so you got to take your time with shit. You got to yeah. do it right. Cannot you know, you got to do it right. Yeah, you can't it's, do it's both. too hard. Yeah. It's too hard. It's yeah. too difficult creatively for like in your mind. Yeah, um, it's taxing. We, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Real quick, I want to get your creative process real quick before I move on to the next question. Uh, shout out my boy, uh, Cole Fucker. No, shout Fuck out you. to Cole Fucker. <laughs> 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 shout out, love. love you, dog. What up, low life? Yeah, man. My uh, my creative process, bro, is just like I just like to pull up and just vibe, like whether it's with the dogs or by myself. Like I just be in a certain mood sometimes. Like I want to go to the studio and be by myself. Yeah, and like. It'd be, it'd be crazy because, like, I'd be going to them to, like, to be, like, sauced up on, like, to get be better at beats, right? Right. And, like, but on my own time, or by myself, like, I'll send them a beat after I'm making it, and I'll be like, damn, that's just cold. Mm. And, like, damn, that's just like, trash. super hard. And, like, but, like, on my hard. own, like, when I could really focus in, like, I, you know, like, and, and I just want to stop real quick. These cats is lying. They created a process. They got to, they really just lying to you, bro. They really, they got to roll up first, <laughs> chill, vibe, have a whole ass conversation. Like, man, quit lying, bro. Hey. Like, Why are you my biggest hater? <laughs> <laughs> Cause Bro, I'm walking in the studio. You're my mean, biggest hater right now. <laughs> I didn't yeah. hate it, man. But I yeah, man, I that, nothing to deserve this. I just, you know, like it's just, <laughs> like I, it's just a whole vibe. I ain't got no like agenda at all, bro. Yeah. Whether it yeah. could be on that's the best way to produce. create, bro. Like yeah, not to man. really go in there with an agenda because I, it's genuine, fresh. You feel me? Like right. it's like. But but I kind of I kind of I kind of hate that I kind of hate that like like checklist type like fucking yeah. session you know what I'm saying okay yeah. well we're gonna start on this then we're gonna do this and we, man let's just go vibe because I think a lot of people forget the essence in music yeah, that music yeah. is a vibe it's a t- it's a moment yeah. in time it's you know what I'm saying you feel me you gotta right. feel the beat can you feel the you gotta, beat you gotta have inspiration <laughs> yeah no oh god you gotta, you gotta oh that. god. What do you think? Um, what do you th- what do you think? Uh, one of the unique uh, approaches that you guys have to your music that separates you from any other producers or even engineer. Uh, we just different, bro. Above all, like if if <laughs> if you would hear anything, uh, uh, any one of our sounds from book to like Andre, T and myself, like we we don't even sound like our shit's like like I we tell everybody, bro, our shit's mixed with LA, Bay Area, and Detroit all in one, bro. See, and, and that's a cold once, that's like, a cold gumbo pot we, right there. Mike. We call it pressure music. You feel me? Because like when you hear our shit, that shit just makes you feel some type of way. Whether it's a happy or low feel, dark feel, it just makes it gets you in this feel. Like like my tag is literally villain cooking, cracking house kitchen because I'm raising hell when I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> that feel me? And that's what it is, man. Like, go ahead, Dre, let them know. Yeah. I mean, shit, like... Let them know, Mr. In- make other <laughs> producer insecure. Man, talk your shit. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to think. I don't know, bro. Like, I just I just spent a lot of time, like, immersing myself in the, in, in the music and what I want to do. Like, I told like, you, like, it'd be, it'd be a year Well, I'll, like, I'll just listen to nothing any, but shit like that. Any day I'll go know? to war with anybody's like, producer. Sign, big, anybody, bro. I'll go to war with my guys right next to me, bro, because I'm confident in their style. That shit is pressure. Make you feel weird. It make you want to do better than that. It make you feel, weird. Weird. Right. Make right. you feel weird. comfortable. Weird. Like, damn, oh, you did that right shit. now? Nah, like, I just, man, hold on. Let me pull out some beats real quick like uh, right. down, bro. You ain't got that. right yeah i don't know I'm, I'm just i just try i just try to like really like immerse myself in like whatever sound it is make sure i'm always like up to date on like what people are doing so i know like what to do and what not yeah. to do right. to set myself apart you know? yeah 
Yeah, because I think I like, like one approach I always like to do is try to make everything not sound the same. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Staying ahead exactly. of the curve. Yeah. But, th- but that's another thing, too, because I, I had to, like, sort of relearn that because I feel like when I, was, when I was making beats for a while, I would try to sit down and, like, Kind of like reinvent the wheel every time. Which right. like it's not like it's not productive because you, you feel like you got you can't let yourself use anything you used before, which is like yeah, it's, it's putting these sure. arbitrary like limitations. On right, you, right. Like, and it doesn't help. And I, I started to realize like the best the best like like beats and shit like that are like they're just they do like little small steps, but they make all the difference. Right, it's, right, it's right. Not right. Some, like crazy new, yeah. totally different shit. Like, right, right, right. It's the little things that exactly. go a long way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. What makes you? What makes your shit stand out more than anybody else's big dog? I would say for me, anyone who knows me, they may get a lot of people get irritated because um, the time it takes. <laughs> but hey, but you can't rush sound, greatness, man. I would say sound design for me. For yeah, sure, because the I'm the type of I'm the type of person and producer where. I have to fuck with it after it's done. Like right. whatever yeah, the melody true. is, true. I yeah. have to now sit we're here circle and back to it. Like now, let's go back. And fix sound it. better. You gotta have that hype. Yeah. Any way it can, I have to try to make it sound better. So yeah. definitely, I would say. But that's also one thing I feel like that separates the one percent of producers from the rest of the people. Everyone else is mixing or engineering and sound design. Right. It's the stuff they use. So I feel like I have to spend more time with that. Yeah, but, but attention to de- attention to detail goes a long way, bro. Yeah, attention no, it to matters. Detail it matters. Yeah. Is the is the again when he's talking about the little things, right? Mm-hmm. That stuff <clears throat> always takes over. Yeah. yeah, you you go hear when you play one of my songs, one of the the shit we did, like we mix and they produce. You gonna hear it like you gonna hear the. Uh, the, yeah. the the versatility in it. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's that's just, that's just a good approach to have anyway, bro. And especially you know you guys having a dynamic as a team and shit. How do, how do you yeah. think that? How do you think that benefits you guys just being able to work as a team? Because I'm so I'm so big on teamwork, bro. Teamwork makes the dream work, bro. Yeah, it's like it, it's it, it's cool because like everybody plays their own their own part. You feel me? Like I could be pitching, this nigga could be catching, he could be playing shortstop. You right. feel me? Somebody here to play. Right. You feel me? Everybody it's got like, a position right, to play. Straight I'm gonna up. go slide in, make the beat. You feel me? I'm gonna sit back. Like, all right, cool. And, I, and I'm running this shit. When I walk in this shit, I feel I'm talking to artists. Let me no, uh, you got beats. All right, no, don't even check. We got it from YouTube. We ain't using that, bro. I'm gonna have my oh, guys. Oh God, I hate that you shit. Feel me? And we go from there, and they'd be like, "Oh, word, like, oh yeah, bro. Look, first time I, we are gonna hook you up just so you can see what we do. You feel me? I'm running. And so you can hear the quality. Yeah, right, yeah. So when we go in there. I'm playing. I'm playing head coach, and I'm like, yeah, bro, yeah. <laughs> I just let them do what they do though. Like, right, yeah. you feel me? I'm like, hey, bro, can y'all cook up? And like, All right, boom, man. We smoking, yeah, chilling. Easy. And I'm talking to the artists. Right when I get to my shit, they just cool, and they'll still be. Talking in uh, on the side of my ears, like, oh yeah, do this. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. oh, did you hear that? And mm-hmm. they'll be like my extra ears, and you feel yeah, me? So right. it's like we all work together so that way we can fulfill the the task at hand at that very moment in time. You feel me? And right. this shit always works out, bro, because he's yeah. always communicating with someone. Andre communicating with someone. Everybody get tapped in, and I'm making sure my guys are getting tapped in with the artist solely, so they can get their own work solely. You feel me? Not just yeah. oh, not just I just get my work. No, right, I'm gonna yeah. tap in with them, bro, so yeah. that we can work together. Because that at the end of the day, we all trying to eat. We all be trying to be successful and trying to go up together. You feel me? So it's the only way to pass us sauce on to your boys right. you feel me so they could get eat too look bro it's not just my artist my artist is your artist you feel me mm-hmm. whatever i right, touch right, right. is your shit you feel me so like that's why we and we treated it as such yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. hey but you know what communication is key dog and i and i'm, I'm a firm believer in honesty is the best policy Absolutely, dog yeah. like like with me bro i always tell people this bro keep it a buck with me because i'm gonna always keep it a buck with you yeah, i have zero fun. i have zero emotional connection when it comes to music and the creative right, process yeah. I'm, a, I'm an emotional when it comes to my kids and my money you yeah, know what i'm saying yeah. them two things you're gonna see me flip out about bro <laughs> but when it comes to music if you don't like something i do just just tell me. Yeah. Right. Just be like, oh, or you know, give me a point of view. Like, no, or that's, yeah, you know, what I'm saying yeah. that's not it. Or you know, try this. Or not next beat. Or you know, take this yeah, out. You know, right, 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 like right. keep it a buck with me, bro. You feel me? Because I'm gonna always keep it real with people too. Now there's a, there's a fine line between just you know what I'm saying constructive criticism being disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, sure. We all from the streets. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta know. Okay, you know when to draw that line. Some people don't know how to draw that line. And that's why they get fucked up in the studio. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like you know keep it real, with people. Do you feel? Do you guys feel like the the, the honesty that you guys have with each other and you know kind of pushes you and drives you to con- you know continue to better yourself? You want to go ahead? Well, yeah. I, I was just gonna say, like, I, I think for me, for me, it's like I, I feel like no matter what, like, like we all just we just fuck with each other, like as people, like right. I was, even outside of the music, like, I can go to dinner with him, I can like you know chill and chill with Burke, do do whatever. Like I just feel like we're we're people who kind of see the bigger picture and like understand that like what like what's understood doesn't need to be explained. You Facts. know, so, like we're all on the same page, and it like it it, it it has that snowball effect where we just understand each other that much easier. That makes work that much quicker and that right. much like better. You right. know what I'm saying? Because like we all have this this attitude of like. Like yeah, let's get this shit done. Let's do it right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like I mean, part of the reason I fuck with Villain so much is he's the hardest.
hardest engineer I have ever heard of. Like right. him, thank you. Him working, bro. I'm, I'm dead ass. I need to like I need to say this because I've heard nothing but good things, bro. Him working and everything I've heard, be I like. It made me want to be a better producer. I want to be the, the 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 villain of producing because the way he works with the artist, the way he gets the best performance out of them, and not just that, bro. His mixes are so clean. Right. So fucking clean. The drops, yeah, shit. all this shit, bro. Like every single time, I'm, I'm every single time. Like I got, a, I got, a, I got an artist. I'm trying to work with whatever. I'm like, bro. Like at, at the very least, come, come record with us at our studio because our engineer is fucking cold with it. Right, right. Like, he's nice. You know what I'm and saying? that's a very important yeah. factor in, in music creation, bro. Is yeah. the engineer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? For sure. And I, I yeah. feel like that goes overlooked a lot. Dog. I mean, the, I mean, just the whole. Th- we were just talking about this shit before the yeah, show, yeah. man. Just how, mm-hmm. how vital the, the producer and the engineer really is, man. Facts. And I don't think it man. just gets the light that. Y'all better start giving us our fucking respect, man, on these internet. Give me engineers. my flowers while I'm here. I need here. my credits anytime, bro. Y'all be disrespectful, bro. Like, come on, you give your baby mama, your ex bitch, all y'all credits and shit, but you can't give your engineer. I be doing half the work that be doing. For hey, you know what man. I can't stand? With, you know what I can't stand? I know, I know y'all have been been through this shit. When a motherfucker, when a motherfucker comes to the studio and shit, all they want to rap about is money, but they don't want to pay for that shit. Mm. Dead ass. Let's man. talk. Let's talk about that. Let, let's talk about that. Now we ain't got to say no names, man. But but let's talk. Well, I want to. What? Well, I, I, hey, I mean, <laughs> hey, you're welcome to do as you choose, man. Look, it, it, I, I just put it like this, man. I, I, I always lead the horse to the water, and they always want to drink, but they they ain't ever want to yeah they ain't ever want to bring me to no water and help me drink. You right. Know? Right. So it's like it's like we just look for that in return because I'm the type of dude. It's like you gonna show me, like you gonna hurt me, you gonna fail me, and I'm the type of dude where I'm too nice. I'm gonna be like, yeah. you know what, I fuck with you. I know you. you just let struggle. me know when it's time to eat yeah, too. Just, you know what just let me know. Yeah, like, and, and pass me a it. plate too. Yeah, facts. Facts. Yeah. It's just like, like man, I've been through so much like that, bro. I don't even want to. Let speak me ride on in the I eight for but a second. Those those you know those that's gonna watch, they know who they is. You know what I mean? But it's like. It's just more like I look past it, bro, because that's just like little kid shit. If you don't want to pay up, it's all right, bro. You gonna have to pay up next time when it's top dollar. I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you know how I've always looked at it, bro. It's like when motherfuckers do that shit. It's like it's like somebody being like, "Hey, hey, let's barbecue on Saturday." And he be like, all right, cool, I'm with it. And then, then they be like, so what you bringing? <laughs> you well, you was inviting me. me. Like, what? Well, I'm supposed to bring the yeah, food? It's so it's just, we'll be at your place. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll be at your place, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like, I don't know, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just just, just from my perspective, man, there, I feel I do feel like there, there is a, a a group of artists out there, man, that just feel extra entitled and shit. And, you know, and, and we, I mean, in the music business, bro, we're going to have to navigate around that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To the best of our ability. But at the end of the day, I think we just, all we got to do is just deliver, bro. And, and the, the work will speak for itself. Yeah, Shout definitely. out to the rappers who are serious and pay for their fucking beats shout that out to y'all part. y'all know and who you are not the youtube beats you. man <laughs> not the YouTube, not YouTube beats, beats. and nah. if it's youtube you better know the producer man personally. that's what i'm trying to say dog yeah. like build that relationship all right real quick before we take a break dog um what what is it that you guys look for in an artist like what are the pros and cons that you really look for in an artist man uh shit me just being an engineer bro like I, I just look for uh, just tenacity and, and, and the drive when they come in, you know, because, like, rappers be gassing themselves up around their homies and stuff. They be in the car, the way the studio. Oh, yeah. oh we got the, I got a studio over here at this time. <coughs> when they come, it's like sometimes they be a little shy or something. And I'll be telling every artist, every session, like, really, like, like I'll be prepping them. Like, look, bro, when you go in there, record like this. Make sure you speak clearly. Fucking you feel do me? something Make else. Sure you, you feel me? Like, damn, like, like pick it up, man. Like, right. But I, 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 try, like, I try to, like, Bring the best, like Dre said, I try to bring the best out of them because it's like my name's on the line too, bro. Yeah. And so is yeah. your name. And it's like, I just try to, like, bro, don't be lazy. Like, you know, fucking use your voice. Right. Damn. No, like, don't be afraid. You feel me? Like, and like, meet me halfway too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, if, 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 I'm, if I'm busy or doing some other shit, like, I need to know that, like, all right, I'm working on this beat and then I'm gonna take a break. But while I'm taking a break, you better be right and you better yeah. be doing something. You better bring me back something so we can keep this shit going. Like anybody, yeah. anybody so. that watch this shit going on forward, if you ever want to work with me, bro, I say this respectfully. You better come in ready, ready with your beats. If you need beats, you better come asking us for beats and letting us know what's up because we, our, our time is precious, bro. Don't waste my time, yeah. bro. You feel me? I could be somewhere else making more bread or working with someone even that has a little more. Uh, Don't take clout. this moment for you granted, feel me? though. But for it's real. just like I, I want to work. Y'all that watching, man, come work with me. Let's get this bread. You feel me? Let's but make come- some music. But come correct or don't correct, come at all, man. you yeah. bitch. Come ready to work. <laughs> that fucking part. All right, check it out, man. We're right here on the staff. Did a podcast on our radio, man. We're going to take a little break real quick. We'll be right back after this. You bitch. Yeah. Woo. Yo, what up, what up? We back on the Saturday, the podcast from a little break real quick, man. We in here chopping this shit, man, about production, engineering, all kinds of dope shit and how unique these individuals right here are. And we got a lot more shit to talk about, man. So let me let me run one thing uh, by the world real quick for y'all to for y'all to give to them, man. Name some of the more uh, notable people y'all worked with already. See, uh, man, I worked the uh, the game. I swear, Vezo, uh, True Car, uh, shout out my young cats, Dime Babies, uh, man, Blue Bus Clan, 
Uh, man, it's a lot of people running from the plug. Just you know, uh, AP get it. I, I've I've recorded. I gotta record a uh, man. What's your name? Uh, Danny Lay. Before I gotta work with a cowboy. Shout out to Danny Lay. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I gotta work with uh, V's. Shout out V's, man. I gotta work with uh, Bang Gang Lonnie, Cash Kick Bug, like B O E Sosa, like you know, just uh, man, just a whole lot of different people. Like it's 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 been a blessing, man. Yeah, on God. Uh, shit, uh, I work with so I got I got songs with uh, Wiz Khalifa, Boe Sosa, uh, EBK, Young Jog, Young Slowby, uh, yeah. uh, Young Jog, shout out Young Jog, man. Hood Fame, Lil Ronnie, uh, Baby Youngin, uh, shit, I'm trying to figure out who else. Uh, yeah, just like a gang of people. It's a long list. Everybody, yeah, yeah it's just too many names. For I me. swear, Bezo, he got one. Yeah, yeah, I swear, yeah, yeah, swear Bezo, GT, Los and Nutty, yeah. uh, All Star, no, J- All Star JR, Lil Cotty from PGE. Uh, fuck yeah, man, yeah, Stephen Cannon. Cotty. Yeah, Stephen Cannon, Shout out shit, uh, Jimmy Wapo, Famous Dex, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, a lot of people. Oh, Splurge, yeah. That's right. Uh, well, off the off the top, well, I got a well early in my career, I would say main music, I'm gonna be peasy. It was uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be peasy's from the south, main music from the south. They both from I think like Louisiana, right? Or I don't think um, peasy from Louisiana. I think you're from like Alabama. Oh, or okay, yeah. Down there. Uh. I worked with Blue Bus Clan with Villain of Course. I worked Sir. with um, my boy James Too Cold. Shout out James. I've done stuff mm-hmm. with a couple different people. I got sh- stuff with Swifty Blue. I got stuff with a lot of different LA artists. I kind of want to start, um, after I do some more LA stuff, I want to start branching out to some different trap areas. Probably go to the South for a little while. Yeah, I feel you on that. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Only yeah, because yeah. I feel like, all right, the West Coast stuff is not. It, it, it's going to take off mainstream wise, like the new age is going to take off mainstream wise yeah, in the upcoming definitely. years. Mm. So it's like, all right, until we turn around and dominate the market, everyone has to, we have to wait for everyone to catch on, which is why I felt bad for a lot of artists. It's coming like sooner Draco than Draco the though, Ruler and all of these people because they didn't get their dust due. They're, they're just, just due. due. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. won't because yeah. even the Shoreline Mafia, if Shoreline Mafia would have came out in 2025, they would be bigger than when they came out right? because it won't be the beginning and they won't be the first. Right. Like, I feel like now there are a lot of artists that benefit off of the O3 Greedos, all these different people who Shout to be yeah, first. first in our new age, but they won't be able to get, they won't reap the money or they won't reap the notoriety or whatever because it's it's still early in what we're doing. Right. I will say, though, like, I feel like everybody in L.A., not everybody in L.A., but most people in L.A. who, like, don't have the mainstream shine but are, like, known as, like, respected figures in the community, like, they have a cult following, which I, I think is great because, like, I feel like L.A. is, like, more unique for that, you know what I'm saying? Like even even in like like Chicago, so you had Chief Keith and you had like FVG Young Doug, but it's like the fans at FVG Young Doug were probably also listening to Keith, unless you were like you know Facts. really from there and it was like a personal thing. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> so it's like it's like I feel like LA at least they 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 support like they really really like support like their artists and whoever it is. Because yep, to yep. them, it's like yep, this 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 dude he's he's speaking for me. You know what I'm saying? So right. That, that's the, I, I fuck with LA. They develop cult followings and shit. I that's miss I miss one artist, man. A lot of support. And I don't mean to cut out Dre, but no, you're good. I'm, done. I'm just saying, man, piss some respect on my fucking name, man. I feel like, like, bro, it's one artist that I worked with, bro. I, I produce and I mix and master the song. Shout out Julio Fulio. Mm-hmm. Shout out to um, uh, uh, Kari Loco for giving me that placement. But yeah, man, like, oh, I'm like, like, man, bro, it's a lot of people that we work with, bro. Like, that shit, like, like, I feel like it's just, it's time, you know? Look, and you yeah. know what? The reason, the reason I asked that, bro, yeah. <clears throat> the reason I like to ask, um, Ask individuals like like y'all that question, bro. It's not yeah, not to not question. to brag or shit on people, but just to let people know, bro. Like, put some respect on the work and the yeah, effort that man, we put. Like, because this shit is not easy, bro. I got a song with the game. I produce. Like, <laughs> right? who the fuck got a song with the game? That you feel me? Like, yeah. come on, man. Like, no, my fucking body, man. I like, shit. I think a lot of that stuff though has to do with. It's a different era. Like you gotta oh, yeah. think about. The, you gotta have credits. The, you gotta have a you, name to be. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a resume. Yeah, you gotta have so a resume. New. All right. Think about trap, bro. Think about where trap is right now. It's 2022. Amigos came out how many years ago? And what I mean by that is, this is what I mean. From Dre and all of them back in, from, okay, NWA came out with that album in what, 89? Yeah, 87. Dog came out in 94. Right. Okay. So you had their run, then you had the break that everyone in LA knows what we're talking about, the break when the game and Nipsey came out. Yeah, so that break when we had two artists... When it was the game, Nipsey, then after that, Tiger and all that shit. So from that, there is a great gap. Then it's our era. Mm-hmm. So 
Sure we're still is. early in our era. Trap has been being trapped for over 10 years. So, right. yeah, their advancement and everything is going to be a little bit different. Their artists are used to, like, the radio stations are used to playing trap. Right. The thing they're is, not I, used to, they're not finna just go slap some Draco or slap some yeah. Ruchi or slap some Blue Bloods Clan or a, a North. Well, the North, in, in North California, it's a little bit different because yeah. because they have such an independent market. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, all of California, Hollywood. really. Like, it moves so fast. It's like, so different. So but, they, the, but the Bay is night and day from LA. Like on that on that they, level they get, on that level yeah like their artists I'm not, I'm not I'm not gonna say they're dominating the radio but they play a lot more of their urban underground music right but they're under they're under their underground artists in the bay are like big artists down yeah, there. Yeah, big artists yeah. so, true. so yeah, yeah, you yeah. you run into an unsigned popping ass artist in the mm-hmm. bay he's like he's, that's, that's like running into fucking you know what I'm saying Tiger or whoever exactly. the fuck else down here yeah. you know Which what I'm saying you yeah, will not sure. see them people down here because right. we have Hollywood and yeah. there's a different type of Level. there's a gap there's yeah. a gap like. You don't see the one percent club in in L. A. They're yeah. not. You're not going to see them out at the average when you're just out seeing. Like you'll see a regular artist. Like you'll run into a Draco. You'll run into these different people. You're not right. running into Tiger. Yeah. You're not going to run into Kendrick Lamar. Right. You're not going to run into these different people. That's so it's shit. just it's just a different type of time, and that that that's what I mean. In 2025 to 2025 to 2030, it will be a little bit different for L. A. artists. I believe that we already put in the legwork. Right. You I got people that. who didn't die for this already. Our wave, everything's didn't happen. People have locked up. Greedo's locked up. Yeah. Draco's dead. It, it is. It is. It is like we've taken the losses already. Yeah. And we finally start reaping some of the benefit of this reward. Yeah. Like it, it, it's crazy. It's because LA, LA has been so consistent for so long. They take this shit so serious. Not like they, LA just has this like culture that is like respected and and and, and continued. You know, and I feel everybody like everybody want to mimic the culture. And it's yeah, because it, it's of taken way. so much more seriously than I feel like it's more of like a like a fashion statement for other states to, to kind of do it the way we do in, in terms of like oh how, absolutely like, how how right. how deep the culture gets into like you know. But everything. you kind of got to you got to be here to understand that. You that know yeah, what exactly mean? right. You wouldn't get that unless you were right. here. because. I mean, me, me being from the East Coast, like, I kind of looked at L.A. like, oh, like, why are they, like, oh, they're just moving weird. It's just a mad serious for no reason. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just just really, really just worried. I, to me, it seemed like they were worried about the wrong shit. But then I realized, like, no, like, this is, like, this is how it is. Like, it, it's, it, this is the norm. You know what yeah, I'm saying? This culture, is how it's yeah. supposed to be. This is how it works. Right. You know what I'm saying? In right. general. So it's like, yeah, it's just it's crazy. Yeah, it's a trip when you really think of it like that. But like you said, though, you know, the the, the newer generation has already kind of paved the way, you know what I'm saying, yeah. with the Greedos and all that yeah. shit. And like well, like we were talking about before the show earlier, bro, like even just Draco alone, you know what I'm saying? I, I still don't think Draco's getting the just due that, that no. he bro, deserved. Bro, we got for- a Drake feature. Are you, are you kidding Not me? Not only that, bro, like I'm saying just like what, like what he's what he did for L.A. music yeah. was oh, yeah. crazy, bro. There. He completely Everybody changed the narrative. Let's, yeah. there. Let's yeah. go down the list of the people that were up-and-coming artists that Drake has... Given a verse to and has done songs with. You have McConan, yep. you have um you have um The Weeknd. Yep. You have all and and basically what I'm saying is everyone else on the list. Black you have the Migos, Boy, Black Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Migos, you have yeah. Black Boy, yeah. Black Boy JB. Yeah. Everyone on that Ram list Riddles. took off after that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. what I don't like about um LA and it's not us or anyone from our era, it's actually everyone older. So mm-hmm. it's people in their thirties, people in their forties, people in their fifties. You guys are haters. And what I mean by that is there was no just statistically and just off of street movement and what people were saying in the streets. What artist from the 90s was bigger than Draco before yeah. a deal? Every, he, that, that's what I'm saying, that's what oh, I'm saying no. before the show. He changed the there was whole no course one. of no, LA not, not before a deal. What deal. artist in yeah. the 90s was bigger than Nipsey before a deal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There wasn't an independent then, market like that, bro. But that goes to my statement of why they're haters. Because yeah. there's no way why these people, bro, he's hotter than anybody, any of you guys have ever been. He's hotter than all of you ever were mm-hmm. by himself. Right. So it doesn't make any sense why. He shouldn't have a song with Drake. He shouldn't have had a song with Don Tolliver and the rest of these people. He had a song with Lil Yachty in like 2018. He should oh, not be man. doing these type of things. And still unsigned. And yeah. still, not even unsigned, but still be looked at like he's an underground artist. Because right, right, any yeah. of the other artists who I named were mainstream the second after they got a Drake verse. Right. Mm-hmm. The weekend has not turned around since the crew. Right. Since we heard that song, you know what's crazy? It's, not cra- went down. it's crazy you mentioned that because Tech Nine is kind of the same way, bro. Even though he's an older artist, mm-hmm. this dude's had songs with Eminem, yeah, fucking yeah, Lil Wayne, yeah, a lot of people, bro. And it's still, 
in the same sense, same looked at as an underground yeah. artist. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. He has such a, the thing is, like, people like that have such a cult following that, like, yeah, it's a ridiculous cult regardless, following. Regardless, regardless. But, but Draco did too, though. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Super exactly, cult following. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. LA was yeah. the cult following. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's why we, yeah. we didn't understand. Like, whatever, whatever anyone else didn't understand about those two individuals specifically, right. we didn't understand it because. Mm-hmm. It was something almost like, how do you look at a Louis a Louis bag? No one looks at a Louis bag and says that it's not a Louis bag. So it's right. like, why do, why can a a Big Thirty or any of these artists in other regions make their intro songs or their intro albums, tapes, whatever, and they take off? But every time it happens in LA, we have to discredit or say why it won't happen, or oh they make yeah. dance music, or they make party music. Or oh yeah, or, or they categorize it. Like yeah, yeah, they yeah. categorize it yeah. instead of just letting it be music. Trap mm-hmm. is not. Commercial trap is not dance music. Mm. They turned it into strip club music because they have strip clubs. But traditionally, right. from Ti, no one throws on Ti and be like, "Yeah, I'm finna just dance this whole song." Bro. <laughs> no, for real, no one does that. No, no and see, that was that was more money dancing twenty four. But look, that was that was more that was more of, that was more of my era too because I I had I had the trap music shit. You know what I'm saying? I had I, I bought I actually bought this the I'm Serious CD when I was young. You know what I'm saying? That was before uh, Twenty Foes and shit came out. He wasn't, Come on, he, man. he wasn't popping yeah, like that. But once Twenty Foes and all that shit came out after that, that was like trap music. But like Come you said, yeah. that was still street music then. Yeah. Street. It was commercialized street music, but it wasn't like it is now. Even yeah. so, Icy Boys and all that stuff, I understand the content and how it makes you feel, but it's not particularly... They they have brainwashed people on the West Coast to, to think that the music is not on the same quality of trap and it's not that they just dominated the market yeah. even even I, 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 fuck, I fuck adjust. with you on that I fuck with you on that that's a really good point bro yeah, our, our that's a true. really good point even New York had to adjust New York was out of it for a long time yeah, because yeah. they're yeah. so sample based right. like I love New York traditional music I like, love traditional like the artist who I love from New York is Dave East because Dave East reminds me of yeah. what I grew up listening to from a New York artist right right they're gonna rap on some samples it's gonna be hard drums they're gonna feel me it's gonna be 56 bars yeah, your so, son true story exactly. so what I'm saying the is the trap domination made everyone have to change their style of music. Now, people on the West Coast can't just make West Coast music. Now, we have a Roddy Rich who doesn't make any West Coast music except for a couple songs because he understands that if he wants to eat and compete, he has to do that. Yeah. Right. So, it's... It's, it's odd. It's just yeah. odd. Talk your shit, Bert. You know what? And that's a, that's a real good point, dog, because... New York, I know New York was having this issue, and we have too. Like Roddy Rich is a perfect example, bro. Yeah. Like trap music has dominated yeah. so much now that other regions aren't even allowed to be traditional Damn. to their sound. And then the era of hip hop I used to miss too was when, oh, that's some Texas music. Yeah. Oh, that's some Chicago yeah, shit. Exactly. Oh, that's a, that's some East Coast yeah. shit. Oh, that's some Atlanta shit. That's some Cali shit. Yeah, that's some Bay Area shit. Now. now it's like every 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 new every new sound that come out. Like right now, Detroit's hot. So everybody like trying to even even with the LA scene. Like like even like for instance like for LA cats and some cats from Bay Area, that shit is is kind of like making Detroit beats, but it's in the LA West Coast sound. Right. But they just making it in the the nineties BPM. But even still yeah, at that, sure. Detroit still uses ninety BPM, and you can hear sure. the difference of of, of the hi hats and everything. Yeah, yeah. But still, at the end of the day, it's like yeah, if you think about it, bro. Like like everybody like. Like West Coast make their own shit, Texas make their own shit, uh, East Coast kind of like the originators of hip hop, you know what I mean? And then LA is more the originators of gangster rap. So right. it's like always everyone's gonna have their own like their own ties, different yeah, their own, like, own niche, how yeah. they even feel content. about it. But yeah. when it comes to LA, bro, we get licked upon, bro. We get frowned upon because it's like we do make party music. We make the shit that make their females want to move. You feel me? <laughs> we're, we're the ones over here that get the party cracking. You feel me? So it's like. It's always gonna feel some type of way because we have our own sound, right? And and at that, it's like people from LA want to sound like New York cats. People from LA want to yeah. sound like different areas, but at the end of the day, people always want to sound like LA. They sure. always mimic it some, in some type of way. I don't care if you're doing fucking drill music, you are gonna mimic something in it with your verse or your bar or something. Right. You know what I mean? But it, it it goes back and forth, man. It's gonna be a love hate relationship. And I take that back. I didn't mean to cut you off. And I take Take that it. back. What I said about um, trap music. I take that back. Trap music has dominated, but when I said um, almost like they've sucked the joy out of people making their own regional sound, it's yeah, not right. Atlanta or trap specifically their fault. It is um, I mean, it when is the just, white people in the Zex in yeah. the um, no business offense, noted, right. yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 I was gonna say that. Not even white people, that. but I'm when the executive that, heads in these music <laughs> companies noticed the how lucrative it was. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Then they want, they wanted every artist to be the same. Like, and right. like yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They really want everyone to be little Uzi Vert. Me yeah, well, they, they were, they were, they, and they had the power and the exactly. money and the, and the position to be able to, you know what I'm saying, pull yeah, the strings to exactly. do that. Like, no, you're not going to release nothing but this. But this sound. This and sound this right here. So you're going to work with these producers. You're going to, yeah. Do that. Yeah. Right. I think that's one of the downsides, too. Like, I love the fact that rap has become the new rock. Like, it's become the genre everybody listens to. That's fucking awesome. I hope it continues and shit. It's just the one downside is that, like, because it's now the mainstream thing, it's like, okay, every. You know, tar like Target, Walmart, like even Ed Karen, like who, any, any any person who wants to like get people to buy their shit or do whatever, they're gonna try to use rap to benefit off it in some sure. some shape or form. You know, Absolutely. What I'm saying? Like, stadiums are gonna pay play like trap songs at like stadiums and shit like that, but they'll also like not really want to advertise like the, the rappers themselves type shit because sure, it's like right. they're not all the way like they want to whitewash it a little bit. You know? Oh so, yeah, for sure. So yeah. Hey man, uh, I sent you like some uh, unreleased shit. Uh, if you want to go to Skinny Thighs, send yourself for Big Swift. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Some shit they produce. You sent it to my email? So, so, yeah, uh, no, I sent it to your, your phone. Oh, okay. I'll shoot uh, my other phone. Where's my other phone at? Uh, Could you grab my phone over there, please? It's right by the desk. Right B, by I, wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you a question, though, big dog. Shout out my girl. Shout out my girl. Shout out my girl. Shout out Olivia. <laughs> what do you... Um, Gotta put that in there. What was your... What was really the impact of... Grab my phone, too. That's the phone, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was really the impact of when you heard that Nipsey also passed away for you? For me, it was um, it was shocking, bro. It was yeah. shocking because because pretty much you know what I'm saying me and me and Nipper in the same age like age bracket. He was a little older than me and shit, but um, but it, it was so shocking to me because somebody somebody of Nip's stature, bro, that's not supposed to happen to him. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Definitely. But I think the the other thing of it too was, bro, it. It was a voice. It was a voice that we we never had, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? Like like you know what I'm saying? Like Pac, Pac will always be one of my favorite favorite rappers. I think he's one of the most influential rappers in history. But um, but I think Nip Nip was just a little different, bro. Yeah. yeah. Nip was just a little. But and that's not that you can't discredit. And see the thing I hate though about like this this old and new shit is like we can't discredit somebody who was there before, and we can't discredit somebody who was there now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like definitely. you can't you can't you can't compare X, XXX and Tupac. Right. They're yeah. two different people in two Completely. different worlds. But that doesn't mean that. X didn't have his own impact. That Pac had an impact, and Biggie and, and et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But I personally feel like like Nip's impact, bro. Nip was the thing that pissed me off, bro. Is Nip, Nip was Nip was hated until he died, and then it was a lot of fake say love that. afterwards. There was yeah. a lot of fake love afterwards, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I'll be the first to say, like, I didn't, I didn't, I, I've been fucking with Nip ever since fucking Bullets Have No Names and all that shit too. Yeah. But I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, I was slapping Nip every single day. Mm -hmm. I was slapping, you know what I'm saying? But Everybody I, but I did. Had to one song in there. Yeah, but you got, but I'll tell you, check me out. It's my favorite Nip song of all time. That's yeah, my yeah. shit. I play that on repeat every time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my thing was like, it was the fake love afterwards. But I think the impact that he really had, bro, was like he was really the voice of of this new generation, yeah. this, this form of independence yeah. too, bro. You know what's so funny? You said the Tupac thing. And for me, for me, all right, I'm 25. I turned 26 this year. For me, I think with Nipsey and Draco passing for a person my age, that's why we felt the way we did. And that's why you felt how you did about Nipsey. Yeah, and it's not true. because mm -hmm. it was a discredit to anything about Pac. Pac wasn't from California. Right. Yeah. Pac wasn't ours. He was groomed to be ours. Yeah, but, yeah that's true. So... It's different when but you, that's right. But Nip and Drake, Draco were really our shit, though. They're yeah. really from they were here. South Central. They're really from our essence. So it's like everything they did, it, it exemplified us. And it's like, but it made us think that we we could do it too. When yeah. I, when you I, know what I mean? And it's like Nipsey, he made everybody in LA feel, even if you were in the streets, like you wanted to hold yourself to just a slightly a higher standard. Yeah. Right. Well, whatever you was doing, because of the, the way the music was, like. It, 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 I don't know. And it, I think it's hard for a lot of people to understand. <laughs> it's hard for a lot of people to understand if you're not from here and you right. don't understand the culture. Because you don't, if you're not from California, you won't really understand what those two people meant because they didn't give them their credit for their music. Right. It was more so like an after effect. Like, right. oh yeah, Nipsey's good now because he's passed away and we listened to all of a sudden. So I, I hate asking anyone who listened to Nipsey after he passed anything about his music because they only know about the new albums. Yeah. They don't know about you know what? You know what? That, that fucked that me up shit. though. So look, like I said, even me, for example, like I said, I didn't, I didn't slap him every day, but I was still a fan. Yeah. I met Nip personally, bro, and, yeah. and the man shook my hand and was fucking cool as fuck. And it's just, man, rest in peace to Nip, man. You see, man, he right man, here, man. Respect, man. But I'll say this. But I'll say this though. The thing that did blow my fucking mind was when people only new victory lab. And that just goes to show how whitewashed the industry is on that Crazy. shit. Now, now credit to Nip though. 
he fought tooth and nail on the independent circuit to get to that Atlantic deal, and that was probably sure. one of the yeah. best record deals you could ever fucking have. For yeah. sure. The logistics of that, you know what I'm saying, from my reliable source who's, who's close to all money in, that was a good fucking record deal, bro. But they would have to give him one because he had the whole infrastructure. He had everything, and he, he was, bro, they, they had to give him what the fuck he yeah. wanted. And the thing was, like, you know, but, it, but unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, people, you know, the wider audience only became hip to nip, you know, after that, after, after that, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Shout out Atlanta, come fuck with us. <laughs> yeah, shout to Atlanta. Yeah, no yeah, cap. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, throw that in. But there. um, but yeah, but you know, uh, yeah, it just it, it it just kills me, dog, when I see shit like that. And just to be honest, let me ask y'all a question. Um, when you see all these artists passing, man, like you know, what I mean, Young Dolph passed. You know, unfortunately, Draco. We saw uh, Slim Four Hundred. You know, uh, all these rappers. Like it just seemed like J.D. Young and just passed yeah, the other day. Yeah. That, yeah. What's your thoughts on this this trend? And it's a fucking trend, bro, of rappers dying in the industry. I want, to go first. Yeah, I want to go ahead. I want you, I want all, each of your guys' thoughts on this. Well, I'll I'll say, and it's funny because I was just talking to a, uh, a couple older I know gentlemen. I got a lot to say. A older gentleman uh, about this, and the older groups of artists were not really outside like we're outside. Yeah, that's true. Like right. they were studio gangsters, so yeah, they would facts. have somebody. They would have an image, like even even um, what you call it, Easy E and Ice Cube and all of them. Like that that was the setup. Like he was the rapper. He was the person actually doing the stuff. That's not happening in our era. We really doing both. Yeah. So it's like, it's hard because <coughs> it's a thin line where you guys were acting like you were straddling the fence, but there's no straddling the fence with us. We're on both online. sides. You got Everything's online. You got to like back That's up. the biggest thing up. too. If you guys in your era were getting into fights and stuff online, whether you win or lost, like there is no losing now. Yeah, if you yeah, lose, right. it's over. Yeah, there is no win to fight another day. If you lose, it's over. Hey, but you know what? There, there's a yeah. The, the fucking the, the curse in that shit is too, though, dog. Is like with, with a lot of the new generation shit. Is that yeah? Back in the day, it was studio gangsters. It was motherfuckers telling stories about yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The problem now, and I have to say it's a problem, is motherfuckers are really living the shit that yeah. they're saying day in day out. And the, and the thing is, it's a problem on a few on a few notes. You know, what I'm saying? I get I get the authenticity right, mm-hmm. uh-huh. but. When, when keeping it real goes wrong, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Dave Chappelle said it best. They're 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 doing federal indictments on For on sure. people. You know what I'm saying. They're like, bro. They're, uh, one of my one of my homies, man. He caught it. He caught an L back in 2019, bro. And inside his motherfucking inside his motherfucking uh court in in the court hearings and shit, bro. They were using all social media posts, mm. everything, bro. I mean. Anything that you put out in the world, bro, they'll use yeah. against you. And you know what I'm saying? There. And, and stays it stays there. there. And people, people smarter. constantly incriminate themselves, people, bro. They I'm get on live yeah, and facts. shit. And, and I'm gonna just say, man, yeah. look, I I know of some, and it's like, man, y'all gotta be, y'all gotta be smart. You like, gotta be smarter, smarter, man. All, all artists, look, just just pick up a dictionary. Read some books, yeah. like get some get some linguistics up in your vocabulary, bro, and and speak <laughs> different. <laughs> Metaphorically, this is how rap started, bro. Speaking right, get creative story, with it, bro. Paint a picture with that shit. Come on, Picasso, right. get your ass up, bro, out the couch, bro, and speak some That's shit. Fun. Talk your shit. Be smart. You ain't want to hang right. it up and go up on the shelf, bro. Be smart with your shit, bro. Who do you blame for that though? The 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 info. See, because this is this social is media. Theory. No, I don't think clout. It's that. Clout. I think no, no, it ain't even that. Clout. Like no, it, it, clout. it, it, it clout. started. Clout. It started when gangster rap in LA started. That was when it started. I, I, you know what? Shout out okay, to OGs. So you're well, there, right? Are we talking about people there. being reckless? You saying no, people no, being no, reckless? No, no, it's not even being reckless. I'm saying it started with how we're talking about the studio gangsters with with Cube and all them. Like all respect to them, but it's a different time. Like they was talking about the shit that they grew up until they got to the studio. They wasn't really doing it at the studio. Because they already got out of that shit, music got them out. So it's different blame? now. It's it's I'm it's I, I want to say I blame I blame that era because that's what started the gangster rap, that's and right. now it oh just, yeah for it, sure it, it just advanced to so like you know what fuck it we really out here talking and shit and this shit is real we ain't funky no nothing. you're absolutely right like, I got to say that too though like, and then the audience want you to be real look they like, they put the image of this gangster shit yeah. out there so it's much like to the, the public are stuck between it was, two tears bro it was it was interpreted by the younger ones coming for up sure. but they wanted to live it yeah. yeah and they did and they do. So and why then, would you not if you're no? Because this is what I was talking about with older gentlemen. I said so. I mean, rappers are saying, "Oh, I'm so real." Like they, nah, they, they, it, they, they, they created that narrative that you got it. You got to be authentic it, about it. It really right? took off with Sosa with Chief Q. Come on. He's no. he because he, look no, he, I, I was like Gucci man. No. Shout out Gucci man. Look, 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 shout out Gilly and Wallow, man. A million dollars worth of podcast. <laughs> I was listening, bro. Look, bro, what they said, look, look, bro. And, and it's facts. And I'm gonna say it, bro. Like when Chief Key came out, it wasn't him just showing it like his things up in uh, like his artillery up in the videos. That was his lifestyle. 
Like right. that was him yeah, really. Yeah. Like this is we're not just doing it. And after that, people just wanted to do it because it looked cool. You right. feel me? And then all the after Social that, media, it just took off because saying. everyone. And then after that, it just kept going, going because LA all ra- all rap music. If you're not in the industry, but all rap music going into that, bro, it's all pro gang rated. So like they want you to to be somebody, so yeah. that way they could picture you to short shape you to like. Uh, to be somebody these kids yeah. can look up to so they can make money off of you and they can get paid off of that. Right. If the rappers in the 90s were studio gangsters and they weren't really out here doing anything, why would you guys not, all right, at least if you're not going to tell the public, why would you not put a little memo in for the Because <laughs> they don't care. They're not really doing it. <laughs> they don't but care. That's, that's no disclaimer. It was for the I mean, bag, bro. It, it, it's, it's the same, it's the same reason as like, it why, it's that's like reality. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's like, Controversy sells. You guys put no disclaimer but like in death. there. And then you See, guys turn around and say that, that we're wilding. We're not wilding. Y'all was talking about the same stuff when you guys were our age. Mm-hmm. Right. We just didn't know that you guys were lying. That's. <laughs> that. We didn't know. Bow, 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 bow. So now that we don't think you guys are lying and we really out here Shit. doing that, and y'all looking at us like we crazy, we're confused as to why you guys are right. looking at us like that. Yeah. Hey, because I ain't going to lie, dog. Take like, your shit, Bert. Hey, when I was growing up, too, like I thought these motherfuckers was really living that shit. Bro, yeah. you got to think, NWA was the world's most dangerous group. Like mm-hmm. People really believe, like, was, oh, that's NWA. If they come out with a rap group called that right now, they're going to, they're, it's a Rico. You're going to jail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, oh, God. And then, and then it's a famous, all right, the NWA movie. It's a famous It's a famous couple of events that everybody in L.A. know that happened. So when Ice Cube got into a fight, when the Outlaws got into a fight with, um, I, I don't know if it was Pac's friends or Dre's friends, when they got into a fight at that mall, if that would happen now, and it's recorded. Whoever gets knocked out, whoever loses, whoever has a mishap, falls, whatever, it's going to be viewed as you taking an L. You're going to be on camera. So how right. do you guys come back from that? It was so many losses they were, that they, they were able to mean. take. Yeah. And, and, I, they come, and they come would back come from, back from You know what's funny? Hey, it's funny you mentioned that. I forgot what the fuck was that movie I just seen. Um, Jennifer Hudson, she plays, uh, I think, Aretha Franklin or something, right? Okay. Okay. Anyway, if you see the movie, it's actually good. Oh, yeah. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Okay. It's good movie, bro. No, no, like, no, I love it's it. It's new. It's new, right? Yeah, yeah. New movie. I it's seen it. Yeah, really really good movie on Aretha Franklin. Crazy yeah. story. I didn't know her whole story. Anyway, there was a point There was a point in there when Aretha Franklin went and did a show. She was a full-blown alcoholic, right? Okay. And she passed out on stage, fell off into the crowd, like, whoa. Yeah. But, yeah, like, fucked up the whole show, bro. <laughs> right? But there was no cell phones, that, and no cameras. Yeah. So, Bro, it was just word. It was just oh, Aretha Franklin fell at her show last night. Like, oh, you, had you remember to be there. when Beyonce slipped off the stage? Bro, she didn't even do nothing crazy. She literally fell off the stage, and that was the thing. That's but that's what, what I'm saying. That's what I'm, talking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There was no way to there was there was, there was yeah. no way to you know that's what I'm saying crazy. capture that moment. So yeah. so she was able to bounce back bounce from that. Back. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, it's, it's like a, a rapper like like. Any rapper that came out 10, 20 years ago, whatever, they try to, if they try to do the exact same shit they did back then, they did it today, I mean, that shit's weak, right? It's weak. Right. But the fact that everything is online, every single minute of your life is documented, like all those times in between, like the times- Your you fuck cool, ups are highlighted. You, yeah, you got, you got to be like consistent each and every day. You can't ever slip up. You can't, because some, you never, somebody might have a camera, somebody might be tweeting about you, somebody, you might be right. on someone's live, whatever it is. You got to be 100% You got to be on your time. shit, dog. Like, yeah, to the point where yeah. it's like, you don't know it's nothing not even else, fair. You know? like, yeah, it's really like when not. when I was growing up, a rapper, like, okay, when I was growing up. We, Jay Z wasn't being watched all year, every day, all the time. Yeah, artists like the 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 artists at that time, you would get watched when you come out with an album. You might go on TV, do an interview. You go on 106 and Park, and you do something on MTV, whatever. Excuse me, but it's like now they have to put on a show. 24 hours, 365 days a year because they're being watched all the time. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like who puts out the most content wins. It used to be, it wasn't about putting out the most content. It's a content-based visual era now. It's a content game. And I wanted to ask you a a serious question. I feel like more producers need to start bringing to the forefront. We had this conversation a a little bit earlier off camera. I wanted to ask you, how do you feel with um, older producers opposed to younger producers as far as we're creating our own instruments and them just using samples and throwing drums over. Yeah, it. I mean that's just technology. It's a it's a great question. Look, we're gonna take a real uh, real quick break. I'm gonna answer that question as soon as we come back. Biatch. Yo, motherfucker, we back. That was a real quick break. Real quick break. Um, okay, so you was asking me a real uh, real in- an interesting question. Very good sure, question. Let's sure. ask it one more time just for the people who fast-forwarded for some dumbass reason and got to this point. Yeah, I got you. I, got you. I wanted, I wanted hey, to know because I've been... I want to know this question, and I want to get it answered from the community in general. How do the newer producers feel when it becomes a 
game more so like a bullying game where older producers feel like they have the upper hand when they weren't creating their own instruments. Okay, so I think an honest question. Okay, so you have a, you have a lot of producers, new producers today that are you know sound designing and doing stuff like that, right? Uh, back in the day, a lot like you said earlier before the show even started, there was it was a ve- hip hop was very sample based. Yeah, for sure, but then you did have you did have your unique um, producers like Timbaland. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? The legendary Trackster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you ha- it in. You know what I'm saying? Uh, DJ Quick. You know, I mean, yeah. I can go down a list of, of a list of producers from back in the day that were very instru- instrumentally, um, you know, advanced and shit. But I think what even today, the sample base back then is just like the loop producers today. Okay. Yeah. So you got a lot of new producers that are coming out and they're popping as fuck, but they're not doing nothing but adding drums and 808s to a loop. For sure. To a loop. However, who's making the loops? The real, the real producers, the one right? Understands fucking music. The real fucking producers. So, so to be honest, bro, um, I think that any any older producer trying to throw shade on the new producers is fucking stupid. It's pointless, but it's also pointless for the new producers to throw any shade back because okay. it's the same fucking thing. Yeah. The older, the older, the older generation was using sample based, and the newer generation, a lot of them that are popping too, are just using fucking loops. Right. Yeah. But, but you did have those producers back in the day who were hands on with the synthesizers and really doing their shit. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got the producers today who are playing guitar, they're yeah. playing keys, they're That's playing right. chords and roads, and they know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. So really, there's, the, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a tomato tomato. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, history repeats itself and so does music, too. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So I think, I mean, but to answer your question, though, I think, I think it's pointless for either, either side to yeah. even have an argument in this, in this scenario. Right. Because we're both, it's, both it's, like, it's, like, it's like I come to the picnic and my auntie's drunk, but your, your uncle's the drunk one, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? We, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, this bitch is going over here. You know, she's going to talk shit and, and, you know what I'm saying, spit in somebody's face and shit. He over here, you know what I'm saying, hollering at all the young bitches and shit. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's a fucking mess, recipe for disaster. Yeah. My family ain't better than your family type shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, that one. So you know, I mean, that, but that's my honest opinion on it. I think, I think, really, there's, there's really no argument no more because we're both, we're both not perfect. However, what, what needs to be highlighted is those producers who are really creating the sounds. Yeah, definitely. Because back in the day, you know, I mean, with, with all the sample base and shit, and it's not to shade. There's some amazing sample producers, and I'm not shading some of the producers today that are popping off loops. You know what I'm saying? But. I would like to highlight, and I wish I wish the light would be shined on the motherfuckers that are really creating this shit mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm, man. But I feel like, and this is my question to you guys too: Do you feel, and especially you guys being as creative as you are, as talented as you are, as hands on as you are, do you feel like that, that there there is a there's a disconnect between the hard work that you guys put in and the clout that others get for doing less of the work? Oh yeah, definitely. Of course. Yeah, all the time. Like we we this is one com- this is one topic that we always sit in the studio like. Like, damn, bro, you see this? Did you see what he did? Bro, you know he didn't make that shit. Right. You know for sure he did not. Because, like, I've been in I've been in sessions, like, say, some of the homies, too. You feel me? Like, it'd be like, catch will be making some simple, like, then it, then it, like, some t- like some simple ass shit that just pull up real quick, three keys. You feel me? And then add, like, some simple shit, not even mix the beat. You feel me? And it's like, boom, like, they hot. You feel me? But at, at, then sometimes it's like, it's just, it goes back to who do you know? Or who you know, or who exactly. knows you, and right. that's that's the game. That, accessibility that, over availability. That's the pickle we all in yep. today. What you say again? Say that again for the people who are slow. Accessibility over availability. Yeah. Like, all right, the majority See. of the producers who are hot are only hot because they have a fucking rolodex of artists that they have accessible access to. Right, like they I, you, can get it, them all the time to get on stuff whenever they want, and that's why they're popping because they have a bunch of songs that come out. You know what I tell people too? I, people always ask my advice on this game, and what I figured out in all the years I've been doing this shit, it's not what you know, it's who, who you, you know. know. Who you know? Yeah, I, I think it's also like the presentation too, because it's like think about all right, that producer, like yeah, he he's got that rolodex of artists, but what makes what separates him from other producers that every time he drops, his name is at the forefront, like his yeah, name is absolutely associated For with sure. it, and it, it's to the point where it's like bro like you, you'll see music videos drop like like blogs instagram pages with big big followings and shit they'll post like snippets of videos and they'll be like oh new song by this artist da-da-da, cameraman shot by this bro they'll, they'll tag the cameraman stylist before they tag the producer like right. it, it's nuts like it's the, yeah. the, the, the fact that like the producer isn't seen as like like an indispensable part of the process like just is is, is proved by the fact that we don't have like like th- that that Thought to like, oh, we, yeah, we have to tag the producer. Obviously, like, how do you not know who produced half the song? Right, right? there you was know? a, there, I think like, there was a Breakfast Club interview and um, French Montana was on there and they asked him, like, whatever his biggest hit was at the time. Like, who produced it? He didn't even fucking know. Yeah, that's see, because that's the I'm artists saying. are <laughs> hoes who are only worried about them. Yeah, dead ass. And they want to. the time they be bummed. Man, but this is what I mean by that. 
they don't tag us because they're still trying to use their leverage. Yeah, like right. our rappers, all of them feel like they have this ultimate. You can't leverage. be too friendly, otherwise they're not cool. Um, <laughs> no, not even just that. They don't want to. They don't want to acknowledge how valuable we are because then. If you keep acknowledging how valuable someone is, at some point in time, Man, you have to compensate shitty. them. Yeah. So because they don't want to compensate us, they don't want us to seem valuable. Oh, I can go get a beat from anywhere. Well, yeah, but they want to feel like your beat ain't shit be without me on it. Exactly. Type shit. Yeah. Right, right, so right. it's more so like a leverage thing. And, right. and, and then that's when you got to think more like a businessman opposed to a producer because it's like, all right, I see what game you're trying to play. Right. And it's not like, a, I, I, me personally, I feel like, all right, if rappers want to do that, then... As a producer, you got to start evaluating it. All right, what rappers are you going to take this from? Rap, what rappers are you not going to take this from? Who can really do something for you if you get it? If you give him this beat free, what will really change in your day? Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's not a lot that's going to change, then don't give it to him. Right. Because it's not worth it. Like all of these rappers feel like they can go get a beat free, but if you go get that free beat, more than likely seventy other people got it too. Yeah. Right. Because if you could take it off YouTube, anyone can take it off YouTube. Right. So they it's just, did. we're in <laughs> that did. era. It's like when, when rap first started, there wasn't just a million producers walking around. So mm -hmm. there was only 10 guys. And that's also my argument about the older producers too. There wasn't as many producers. So oh yeah, Com competition. competition was really a lot the best. Less. Yeah. Like yeah. you guys weren't competing with <laughs> the number of producers that we're competing with nowadays. Right. It's not the, the same race. So I don't know. I just think, that, but that's that's the same with everything because that's also the same with the rappers. Like, oh yeah, rap, rappers are 90s, popping up a dime a dozen every fucking day. In a rapper in the nineties, you had to know somebody to get in the studio. Yeah, which and you had to have means, bread to get in the studio too. You had to have bread in the studio, which means in return that you're not going to be practicing as much as we are. We can right. get in the studio all the time. The equipment costs less. The, it's more accessible. So it's more just, advanced. It's more advanced, and I don't know. It's just a lot of different things. Right. It's a lot of different things that attributes to that and. Main main point of that is rappers are hoes. They always <laughs> attack the producer because right. you guys aren't doing it on your own, and we're yeah, female we're prostitutes. Than you guys. That's what you really All the time. is. You, I, 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 I want us to know that too. I think the producers have a way higher talent level than the rappers. All of them, I from top so. to bottom. Yeah, we said this before the show. There's those artists that when they come in, they just kill shit, right? Yeah, they yeah. do. But that's 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 an instrument. Yeah, an artist is an instrument. It's a it's a vocal, right? For sure. However. However, and I speak on the behalf of the producers union because I am a proud member and we That's meet every funny. Wednesday at seven o'clock at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. So so Shout out but, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> no, but, um, not the same. but no, real shit, real <laughs> shit, dog. And, and you know, it just it, you're absolutely right, bro. And the, and the thing is, it, it is a leverage game. But yes. the problem is, without the engineer, the song sounds like shit. Yes. Without the producer, there is no foundation to the really? beat. No. Where's your lyrics going? Where how, where'd you get these lyrics from? These lyrics came because of the beats you're listening to. Yeah, exactly. right. Now I've, I've heard, and, and, and tell me this, I've had a hundred. 100, 100 million rappers come to me and, oh I wrote this without a beat but they can never find a beat to fit it to exactly very few and far between can they do yeah, it and it just yeah. it never sounds right you like know why because the beat is the foundation the it's, the, it's, it's the, the fucking vibe dog. I hate when they do that like hey bro I got these lyrics can you apply it to a beat yeah. I could oh, can try you, can, can you build a beat around oh, <laughs> I, I, I recorded some can you build a beat around it like sick. no that shit is off beat how, like, how can I build how can I build something that I have no idea what the fucking metronome right, is yeah. I don't even know what a BPM you're rapping right. at right here if they knew a little bit about music then they know but they that. don't they would know they not don't. to ask because you know what because that's the that's the other thing too now now, like you said, the, the producer game is very, very, very overcrowded now, yeah, right? Saturated. But it but but Over. I think the artist yeah. the artist game is even worse. Oh, yeah. And the reason being because it doesn't take it. <laughs> I'm trying to find the correct way to say this man, without someone getting. You offended. need less startup costs, you know, to be an artist. Do I think it is? Yeah. They, they don't need. They don't need any musical education. They think all they got to do is just go in yeah, the booth they, and that's rap. That's what I was going to say. They don't the need ice any cream credentials. Man is rap in. Yeah, or they don't need any the, credentials or like, knowledge. They just think like, they just go in there and rap over exactly. a beat. Yeah, I mean, and that's like, the main difference. See, you don't need credentials to be a producer, but you need knowledge. You need some yeah, type of music you theory. Artistry. You need some type of base, right? To to even. How do you make a piano? How do you make a piano melody if you don't know anything? Right. Rappers that goes that goes into the loops, the but beat. then again, with the rappers, where I feel like the people, the reason why they feel like that is because they 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 have a false confidence because the public, again, what 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 I go, it says what it goes back to what I said earlier. If the public doesn't know who the producer is, if the public is being told everything by the rapper, what to think and how to feel about this overall, like. When you think about a plaque, when you think about anything that comes to hip-hop, most of the time, where are you getting this information from? The rapper. Right. 
oh, this is my plot. Yeah, yeah. This is who is important on the song. They don't talk right. about the songwriters. Like uh, we talked earlier about Kendrick Lamar, songwriter, and Tupac, mm-hmm. songwriter. Most people don't know that they had a particular songwriter individually, both of them. Right. Most people will think that Kendrick Lamar probably wrote every bar and every song that he made. Uh, Drake he has did. fucking writers, bro. And it's Ghost no writers. problem with There's that nothing because, because that's how you make hits, bro. <laughs> the majority of top artists got writers. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the difference between just making songs and making hits, bro. Yeah. yeah. You don't if you don't if you don't if you don't have respect and and acknowledge the 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 writers and the people who are behind some of the world's biggest songs, yeah. then you don't know how the music business works, dog. Like, bro, know. like that shit is real. I, I had a session one time with uh, Bad Baby. Shout out, Bad Baby. Uh, I had a session with her, and it was just like a reference track. It was a reference track, and uh, I'd done it before and shit. But it was funny because she was like, "Yeah, she came in all in, like, yeah, I gotta do this reference track." Da, da, da. And she couldn't get in. It. it was just like fuck. So she just ended up rapping over it, but still like that. I'm like, damn, this shit's funny. Like. Like, this shit is really funny. Yeah, like, yeah. N- n- people don't really know, like, it really be like that. Yeah. You well, me? and, you know, a lot of, uh, she was signed to Atlantic, too, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I know uh, uh, my homegirl my home does uh, a lot of writing sessions for Atlantic and shit, too. And they do, they like, they have their sessions. And, where and they that's get- for the artists that, like, she even said that stuff, like, I couldn't even come up with shit, so my manager's like, we're going to do the reference track. I got yeah, the so they hired. They hire. I even told her, like, look, you got to do it like this. I was even helping her, like, look, bro, do it like this. She was yeah. like, I was like, yeah, no, get it like that. But see, that's it's where like, the importance of the, real, the engineer really? comes in and the, the producers producer. and shit. But here, here's the other. writer's blog. Right. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, when, you know, and, and give credit to the artists who are popping, bro. Yeah. Their schedules are busy, bro, because they yeah. are the public figure. They're, they're, yeah. more, they're more publicized than the producer and the engineer, right? Yeah. But here's a, here's a question I want to ask you guys, too, and I, I do think this is kind of a problem in the in the game, dog, is a lot of producers and engineers are treated just for work for hire. I know yeah. some. I know some very yeah. Grammy nominated fucking uh, engineers who I've met and shit. And literally, they don't. They haven't got nothing on the back end as far as royalties and residuals. But what they do get is they're paid for their service for their hire. They might charge you fifteen hundred dollars an hour. So yeah. these but artists that's don't, it. Some of these but artists you know don't make nothing but for tours. I will yeah. say this is one thing I will say. Uh, uh, villains correct. Most of these artists don't make anything. But this is one thing I will say about that. Okay, with the pay for hire thing, I also feel like depends on what you want out of it. Yeah, there's there's, there's certain producers wanna, that angle themselves that way. Yeah, like they, they they're the type that like like oh fuck it, just just come pull up on yeah. me, pay me forty dollars an hour, then I'm not like never gonna see you again. You know, which is like I feel like there's I, it's the same it's the same thing with like there's there's two types of producers. Out. Like there's there's producers, there's bedroom producers, and there's producers who are in the studio in the every studio. day. And I don't think there's anything wrong with either one. I don't think one is better than the other. I just think that it's like a different it's a different market, it's a different feel because you got yeah. some producers that are you know selling beats on beat stars. They got the whole like like v- you know vlogs, production hours, whatever. But they're yeah. never like actually in the studio like make it like they're, Think, think of all the YouTube production I couldn't channels. Do that like, shit. But bro, think yeah. of all the YouTube production channels. You know what's like, crazy? I have I have a gang of beats on Beat Stars, mm-hmm. but I'm still in the fucking studio, bro. And the yeah. thing is, like, I get I get both sides. I threw that. I throw I like personally for me, I throw those up there just to you know, it's See extra income. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, See what so it can do. It's extra do. income. However, I still I don't put none of my beats on on. Um, on YouTube, none yeah, of that shit. Yeah, but see, know. me personally, I've I've worked so much over the years that I've developed a, a catalog of shit. So that's yeah. what ends up online. But yeah. my favorite thing to do is to sit and create with an artist. Yeah, like sure. I like to create from that's, scratch, bro. Yeah. But you know, when you work at the pace that we all work, yeah. you're gonna have ten beats over here, fifteen yeah, beats, sure. and then over time it adds yeah, up. You know sure. what I'm saying? Exactly. And then these beats might not be. You know, maybe they've got used or bought here and there, at least or whatever. Yeah. How the fuck you did throwaways. it? But they throw away. They end up yeah. online. Right. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But the best creative process is in in the studio when you're actually creating. And, and it leads me to my next question because this is one of the things that I fucking can't stand these days, bro. And I and I hate to say it, but I gotta I gotta put it out there, dog. I can't say that. I can't I can't stand say the that. fucking YouTube rappers, dog. And what say I mean by that, that, I pull up a such and such beat off YouTube, and all they do is steal beats off YouTube the whole day. They don't understand the it's importance of stems. It's always a Detroit beat. It's always a Detroit say beat bro. Don't, every and, time. And my point and my point <laughs> is, saying, I know hate's a strong word, bro, but I'm, but I'm keeping it a buck. I'm keeping it a buck because. The essence of creativity, and you you guys got to feel me on this because you're really yeah. in the studio creating, right? Where is the relationship with? Where's the relationship with the producer? Yeah. Where's the importance of? They don't even know what the importance of stems are, like, bro. No, but see, that's what I that goes back to what I was saying, and I will specify this to Los Angeles. These rappers nowadays feel like they are higher than, meaning, all right, if you're a rapper and you have ten thousand followers, and you have a producer who sent you fifty beats, and you like twenty five of them, but he has of 1,500 followers or 500 followers, and he may not have worked with a lot of people. They all want to just use their leverage. None of them want to pay because they grew up in an era where they can go steal a beat off YouTube. Right. So, so it already devalued. It's already it's, devalued. It, that's, again, it's only, that's all they do is devalue. But it's uh, it's hilarious because 
That's why karma is what everyone knows it is. A bitch. Because mm-hmm. they will yeah. devalue the producer, and then that's why it takes them forever to get paid for their lyrics or to get paid consistently at the rate that they want. Right. Because you don't even know how this business all goes correctly. You're used to using your leverage and everything going free. So when you get stuff free, you don't even know how it's supposed to be when you get paid for something. You'll just get paid any rate, whatever. As long as you're getting paid yeah. or if you're getting paid what you think in your mind, then you're good. Right. And that's hard for producers to deal with because then it's like, all right, when do we stand up? When do we <coughs> lay down? Again, what artist do you want to give a beat to free? And what artist do you say, no, I need to, I need to charge for this? Right. You know what's and crazy what for position? me? You know, it's That's crazy a good question. Though. It's like, how how could you as a rapper look at a beat on YouTube, see that it has like a hundred thousand views, and be like, and want I, it? I want this beat. Yeah, I want this beat. Like, like it, it literally the it says free. Yes, yeah. of it. It says matter. free. It said like it, it'll say. It, you know, it won't even say free. They'll just download it anyway. But the point is that like, They're bro, like if, it anyway. if it has, if people have seen it, they've definitely downloaded it. So yeah, like, your shit can be copyright street. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like. It's just terrible. It's just bad business. I, I, like, and dog, bad. look, it's <laughs> I'm not worried about doing business though. Bro, that's, that's the that's, that's the, the point too. I'm getting yeah, at. Yeah, they have grew up in an that's era where too. they can steal the beat, throw it on SoundCloud for free. Just think about this. Yeah. Free, 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 free. Exactly. Yeah. So my fucking point do is, something else. If you're getting the beat free, you throwing it on SoundCloud free. When anyone talks to you about any real business, you're gonna you're gonna feel some sort of way. Which yeah. is why it's hard to work with a lot of artists nowadays. Right. Because these they're idiots, and they <laughs> yeah, actually they think that yeah, that's the shit. way you build value. Like, how are you going to build value? So, and then that's the problem with a lot of um, uh, artists these days under 25. If you haven't hit song and it's from a YouTube beat, how are you really building value? Because yeah. now you don't own the beat. The If it has 100,000 views, you can't buy the beat personally. Right. It's 100,000 people have bought. So that and means that producer's going to feel some type of way because you didn't hit him up. Exactly. You know, 10 so times, it's nine like, times out of 10, so... Most of the rappers nowadays, when they do build a relationship, it's from doing fuck nigga shit at first. Like, you mm-hmm. stealing beats or you acting weird or trying to use your leverage when you're not even in the position <laughs> the to do that. Like, no, it's right, cool because right. I got the placement. Thank you. That's the only reason why we do it now because it's like, all right, you stole it from me, but I got the placement. Right, but it's yeah, like, that's like, that's the only thing we have. But it's it doesn't like, do Y'all not paying, y'all not. Did you guys hear, uh, did, uh, it's funny, did, this is a crazy story. Did you guys hear um, the designer the designer thing about designer the panda song? Uh-uh. Oh, no, I, I, I you don't know, the, know what you're talking about, but I know how I felt the first time I heard Panda. Okay, okay, look. All right, so let me tell you the Panda story. You can look this up. This is all Puddle Gregor. So fucking, he had got the beat off YouTube, right? Okay, that's crazy. He downloaded the beat off YouTube. Um, I don't. I, I think he got a lease, whatever. The, if some little bullshit that, you know, the YouTube producers scam motherfuckers with every day. Because I think like this. A lot of those YouTube producers, they roll in the dice, bro. What? They pull that, post that beat up, and they wait for one of you dumbass rappers to grab that motherfucker Get popping off it so they can keep all the money. And that's exactly what happened. So here's what happened. That shit blew the fuck up. Yeah. But everybody thought it was future. Yeah, I thought that's what I was going to say. I thought it was future, what? too. I'm like, this future hot as burst in a long time. Yeah, they're like, oh, my God. crazy. Yeah. What? Come on with this gun. My soul. I'm Fucking home with my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> but look, the shit blew up. The shit blew up, and the, the dude who made the beat was a white boy in fucking France, right? That's I think he lived funny. in Paris or some shit, right? That's yeah. hilarious. He, got, he downloaded the beat on YouTube. He thought he had it, and then he got signed. And then good music picked him up and all that. And then uh, I, I think it was um, Mike Mosley. One of them guys uh, was trying to get the. They were trying to get in contact with the producer. And they were trying to break him off. Yeah. Like give us the fucking rights to the beat. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> no, no, bro. He, he say we no. He know <laughs> no. them. He know them right, right into blackball status. But guess what? He kept ninety nine point nine percent of all the residuals Damn. on that song, and designer designer had to split zero point zero one percent with good music, his management, that's and the rest, of, and the label. That that was the same shit that happened with the with the trap queen beat. Like for for, for really yeah, okay. So so back in the day, like when when that beat was sold, they originally had sold the beat. To somebody else, and it was just—I think it was like some some like Swedish artist or something like that at the time, some like random dude. He, he they'd sold the beat to, but then uh, they 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 sold the beat to Fetty Wap or something like that, and that shit blew up. And then they had already given the rights to somebody else, so they couldn't make any money off of it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And they Fetty Wap just basically yeah. got out on them, you know, just because they didn't. Right. They fucked up, you know. They right. Up, so. But it was funny because good music. I, mean, I knew they were pissed, bro. Mm-hmm. Hey, but hey, you know what's funny? But but the only thing I can think of that that the French motherfucker who made it, he probably never had a placement since. But he don't give a fuck. He got oh, a yeah. bag out there. He's somewhere. He's somewhere. He's somewhere by the he Eiffel Tower. For the rest yeah. of his life. <laughs> Getting a blowjob beat and eating some French fries. It's crazy. Because Getting a blowjob beat and some French fries. Good music <laughs> had to had to take an L because <laughs> the rapper didn't do his due diligence. Right. 
Like the rapper didn't do his due diligence yeah. and they didn't check out stuff and then they had to he had to take an L on one on the biggest song of his life. Yeah. And that goes back to what we're saying. He didn't make nothing. We're not asking rappers to do something out of the norm. Yeah, they don't right. want to do the, basic the, the basic fucking basic regular yeah, stuff. Basics. Like, all right, how do you want to be a rap? Oh man, it's so annoying. As a producer, we have to pay for sounds. We have to pay for the doll that we make the beat in. Studio. We have to pay for all of this extra stuff. Speakers, yep. interface, computer, all of this shit. Ram. You can kind of charge. You can kind of try to, you can try to uh, scam for something a Something for your girlfriend because you're making beats instead of being know with her. after a while of being <laughs> a producer, you don't really want to... Um, have crack plugins or stuff because you updates and different stuff. Yeah, but then, yeah, you're, you're only keep, cheating yourself in the you're end. Cheating yeah, yourself yeah. in the end. Gonna so it's like, like this. everyone else around the rapper understands the value and why they have to purchase yeah. these things from right. a videographer purchasing his camera to an engineer purchasing the plugins to ma- to mix and that. But this is the only person out of the whole group that feels like he shouldn't have to pay. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Why is that? Why is that? I don't know. Like I'm gonna just say this. Look. There's there's two there's two lanes you artists could go down, and you obviously want to go down the cheap way. So if you want to go down the cheap yep. way, you better have some money to go the long way for your marketing and and, and they're not that. even doing that. Right. They you gotta have some bread, and but like still not I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'll be dropping shit on Instagram because like, th- th- this on is Instagram. I'm just saying because this is what this is how I run it with artists. If they don't want to pay right now. All right, bro, what you want? It's the game plan. Okay, yeah. it's the game plan. Okay, so what's, 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 what, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to put you on a schedule, For and sure. you come in. We're going to work out. All I ask is that you do you you promote my shit. You you make sure you talk about me. You make sure you get my foot in the door, and I'm going to make sure your shit is saucy when I come and mix it. I'm going to make sure my producers take care of it because right. when I get paid, my whole team eats. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to build and, and take a risk and build with a team, so what you can do is, you make sure you cash out the engineer and you catch out the producer for their beats. Now, if you want to fuck with us, it, it's different now. Before, we should just give it a little cheap. Now, it's different, man. You want to fuck with us, is we charging $300 you gotta pay, you gotta pay the fee. You gotta to $1,000 on, on the die for beats because we have a category. You want an industry beat? That, that's a band. I you definitely want to shout like, out to... Um, it's, it's different ways you can right. go about it. I definitely want to shout out to Metro, though, because he's one of the producers where I feel like changed my perception of producing when I was young. Like, he's one of the only guys who I felt like made himself a public figure in the producing stuff and made himself a lot of money but didn't he wasn't super cheesy. He didn't right. have to be in, in, in the front of a whole bunch of music videos. It was it was tasteful. But that's that's what I think the route that all producers should take nowadays. Yeah. Because if these artists want to keep using your leverage, all right, you wanna get on a beat, you want the beat for free, cool. But I'm gonna put the song out. Yeah. Because right. And I want to say that goes back to voice. That's why I feel like voice was hard and voice was smart. Mm-hmm. Because voice built his platform up and he kept all the videos on there yeah and the videographers are winning that way because yeah, like 100%. all right you niggas want to do all the weird shit you do you don't want to do all you don't want to act right so you're going to lose in the end yeah because yeah. you guys want all this stuff free so i just feel like everybody engineers everybody should start keeping it Keep mm. the content because we own more of the content than they do anyway there's a thing called mechanical rights Look it up, you motherfuckers, for real. Yeah, for real and, that, shit. and that's what I think should happen because it just gets to a point like. It's also like, don't you want these songs out? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, yeah. this shit was hard. Well, you like, know, you know and, I mean? like, and, and, and dog, and the thing is, bro, it, like, it, it's it's frustrating for for people in our position, bro, because of of the the time and the effort that we put into mm-hmm. to these records, bro, into sure. it's, to almost feel like to almost feel like you, you know, you're like you said, it's it's always the leverage over 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 what we do, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They, they don't they don't they don't act as if the engineers are so in fucking important why these records sound the way they sound or how these songs even come together is because of the foundation of the beat you know and so on and so on the musicians who played yeah. it, the guitar the dude who played the guitar on it the dude who played the fucking flute on it you know what I'm saying like like the, just the, the the attention to detail that goes into making some of these records bro and how it's it's so swept under the rug mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying and just you know pushed onto the artists like they're the whole they're the whole reason for yeah. the whole record you know I mean cause you guys could go back to freestyling on Instagram with no beat or anything behind right. you and we can see what that what happens with that, but right. no one wants to go back to no one wants to see that shit anymore. Right. People want to hear actual songs, and the engineers should get more credit because no one will listen to your songs if they didn't do what they did. Yeah, right. Yeah, and man. it's just like they be sounding. Dr- oh, it's, it, it's direction too. Like it's I, Dylan crazy. gives input feedback all the time, and I feel like that's what makes a good separates a good engineer from a great one. Right. Yeah. So. 
Right. The devaluing has to stop because it, it makes, does. Yeah. It also makes people not want to do. Like when I go, if I'm in there with a rapper and that's all I hear, all you hearing is you talking about. Like I can tell it's a big ego thing, and all you're doing is talking about yourself, making yourself seem like you're so great. And you go in there and you don't knock the verse out in one take, <laughs> and you're in there taking all night, and you're better sit down, boy. I lose <laughs> enthusiasm. I no longer want to do Take anything seat, because it's yeah. like, yo, you're not even ready. Right. <clears throat> yeah, and then not not only that too, bro. I think just one of the, one of the other biggest misconceptions is is just, you know, as a producer, as a as an engineer, you know, what I'm saying what 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 we do and what we bring to the table, man. It's it's not nothing that should be always taken lightly, dog. And the thing, nah. in my in my reason for saying that is to say this. I've met some incredibly talented artists. I mean, sure. yeah. talented yeah. Yeah. Like as ours. fuck. But I'll tell you this: one of two things. Well, if on the on the negative side, on the con side, one of two things. It was either they had they had a fucked up personality. They were just a shitty human being. Yeah, yeah. shitty human being, bro. It's I mean, like just that. trifling, bro. Like all the talent in the world. Like what the fuck? But just you don't want to hang out and you want to be around it's them. Like bad, bad kid. Either that, or um. It was either that, bro, or they just they don't push themselves, bro. Yep. And and the, and here's the thing with that: hustle beats talent when talent sure. fails to hustle. For sure. Yes, sir. Say that again. And it's always better working with a coachable artist over a, a talented artist. Yeah. yeah God damn, man, you man, artists got to stay a student, man. Quit trying yeah. to be the fucking teacher, bro. Yeah. yeah, for real, for real, man. I gotta I gotta get up to y'all. This is probably one of my favorite interviews I've done, just on the yeah, on the on, the, on the technical bro. aspect, man. Uh, man, I can't I can't thank y'all enough for coming by the show. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and really, it, yeah, no, we got to do this again, bro. And maybe maybe we should try to find a way to do something. Right. I'll come to y'all studio and shit. Maybe set up the equipment, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. and so the nice. cameras, bro. Y'all, y'all down for that? Set up yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Set up soon. Yeah. Well, shit, I gotta come get the studio with y'all anyway, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're we gonna lock that in. date in soon, bro. And um, hey, you know what? I'll bring the gear, man. And let's do it. let's do another episode on this because I think we're really we're really touching on some important topics, bro. Yeah, that yeah. I haven't I haven't really been able to touch on on this show yet, man. And I'm very grateful for that, bro, because you know we do have a voice. We do have we do have a we do have a right in this game too, man. Yeah. And I think it needs to be known. I think you artists need to start giving putting some motherfucking respect on the people who are making your sure, shit sound the way it's some money. Man. Money's cool too. That, that yeah, money's right, cool too. Yeah, Either yeah, or. Money, also Don't come great. in my kitchen if you if hey, you if nah. you're not trying <laughs> to put some spices and shit. Don't come to my table, bro. Ain't God no seat for it. you, bro. We hey, still. everybody in my kitchen, we whipping some type of shit. Right. We still need to have that uh Rhythmic versus urban music conversation too, because they got they we not gonna get off the head for that either. Everybody right. want to keep acting like. Mm-hmm. When did dance music go out of style? Right. When did that happen? We stopped dancing. A while. Ago. I thought we. So <laughs> wait, so wait. When did trap artists stop making dance songs? Because they all everyone always wants to say the West Coast is dance music. Soldier Boy made every single one of his hits was a dance song. Right. The economy crashed and people had to make money. I think that's what it is because it, tur- it, it turned it, it turned into it went from you to, to me. To <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey, I just got to tip my hat to you guys, man. You guys are incredibly hey, man, talented. Play, play one of the release on there. Appreciate it. Pick whatever one, man. Let's and just a quick it. shout out, man. Y'all stay tuned. We got some hot shit with EBK Young Jock. Shout out sure, my boy Big sure. Swift. Shout, shout out Murder Westside Baby. Tuck for shout that. out Don Babies. Tuck. You feel me? Shout out True Car. Shout man. out we got all some the hot shit. Be Cold with, fucker. All the homies. Y'all stay tuned, right. man. Shout out Eddie Days. Yes, shit sir. coming soon. Hey, y'all hit the link in my bio. Made by Villain. Hit that link. Hey, link everything. in the description. Make sure you fucking follow these guys. Tap in with them. You need beats. You need mixing, mastering, engineering. We're gonna get you right. Get it, my guys, man. They're gonna they're gonna take real good care of you, man. Listen to the song. So look, we gonna fade it out with this one right here. Man. Hey, thank you guys for coming on the show, bro. Man, man, appreciate appreciate you, man. Really appreciate it's you guys for real, man. Thank you for having us. Sab did a podcast right here on iHeartRadio. Oh, hold on. This shit ain't connected. We're gonna connect it. <laughs> right here on iHeartRadio, man. You know what the fuck it is, and you also know what it ain't, bitch. Man, shout out my beautiful partner right there, my girl. Hey, shout Sandra, out my, my business partner, shout out the owner the of our studio. So, love you, baby. Wait for it. Niggas that you round the back door, you if you let them Off a half a 15, got me feeling like I want to Had to get to know you before I really want you Thought I'm rolling weed, I said, baby, crush up that dead nigga If you paid for it, get your money back, I'm here, nigga When I drop that bag, it's like my feeling disappeared with it Hopped up out the bends and I hopped up in the Bentley Planes ain't a bus down, I rock it when I want to GT Park, I can drive it when I want to I was out of town with that girl in that Never put the spot now nah, unless I got a full on. I was thinking 30 shots in case they want to go on. The soul to the center, life came with no. Game